on air. Uh, having a, oh, oh, so I got, I don't have enough to go around, but I can do a few more. Yeah, well, we have the wrong color ones, and if we're going to turn them all black. Oh, right. Well, maybe we need to spray paint them before we, no, just scratch them. No, up. yeah, no, I was thinking of even just sharpening them. Sharpie could work. I might have uh, some model paint that could do it. Yeah. Oh, hey, are we live? You know are what? we live? I think we're live. <laughs> Hey guys! Hi! Hi! Surprise! It's a live stream. We were we were kind of expecting it, but apparently not like terribly professionally. Hello everyone and, and welcome to our, our Monday live stream. Uh, uh, this is my co-host Felicia. Hello. And you might know me. I've got a YouTube channel called Odin Makes. I put things out on occasion. But hi, I'm Odin and thank you very much for dropping in and, and visiting us, uh, visiting with us during our live stream today. We'll be on until two o'clock our time-ish. We usually run over because I don't know how to say goodbye or sign off effectively. Is there anybody in the chat? Hey, there's a few people in the chat. It's hi, popping hi, up. Hi, hey, Odin. Hi, hi. The hi. what? The what? <laughs> um, okay, Battlefront. So, according to my equipment, my audio is working. Can you guys hear me? That's the only test I've got. Let's pop out chat so we can see that. And I'll also need to double check with my Discord to make sure that the patrons didn't ask me any questions or have anything specific they wanted to talk about. Because I set up a Discord server just for my, my patrons to be able to get a question directly to me in a, in a way that I can see it. Because I'm not always next to the chat box and things fly by and I miss them. Special treatment. Special treatment. Special treatment for my... I don't want to say special friends. That kind of almost sounds mean. Special, special treatment for my for my uh, favored friends, <laughs> my favored fans. Yes, which of course I can probably directly say, "Hey, Nicole, I'm sure you're here. You're always here, which is cool." Right there. Look at right. all caps, very top. Right. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah. See, right there. All caps, very top. Hey, Odin. Nicole from Patreon. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yes. <this> okay. <laughs> of course, Nicole's Hi, here. Nicole. And I see we got a hello from Turkey. So hello, M2. Wow, I'm going to... Okay, you got umlauts on a U, which is cool, because I know what an umlaut is. I can't pronounce umlauts. Uh, it's um, Katuli Kism? Kism? C-C-I-S-I-M. Sism? 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 Is it an S? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, M2. But hello back to back to Turkey. Uh, Prime Guy 98 says, I finished a fursuit arm sleeve. Want to see? Sure. I don't know how you're going to send it to me right now, but um, yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. Somebody who was, I had, so last week, if you saw the video that came out last Wednesday, uh, Skyland was, was here with me. We were working on an inflatable dark shadow prop to go with his uh, Tokiyami cosplay from My Hero Academia. Yeah, more sewing. More sewing, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um... Well, Skyly came down with, with his dad and his twin brother, and so all three of us were in the shop uh, over the full weekend working on that. And one of the things that uh, Jerry had pointed out to me, Jerry's Skyland's father, um, he, knows, he knew of a particular cosplayer that stopped doing cosplay and started doing fursuit requests. These are the full-on furry mascot fursuits. Okay. Which, of course, they all look really good. I mean, to, to just look at, I, I've seen these guys at cons, to just look at what they're wearing, how they're built, how the heads go together. They, they look three-dimensionally cartoony and, and right. They're, you know, it's not, it's not like some of the funky mascots I've seen at, at, at sports games. This is No, no, sculpted. I know. I yeah. work with lots of mascot yeah. heads. Okay, yeah, you yeah. have. That's true. Yeah. So I would love to see your fur arm because um, the, the amount of, of, of legs that I've seen that have the... Um, it's not the backward backwards knee. It's just it's that, it's got the dog extra leg. Joint. It's got the, the heel way up yeah. in the end because you're walking on a pad, not your foot, mm -hmm. and and just the different ways of making that work. It's I find all the craft and all the effort that goes into those fascinating. Oh, definitely. There was a con I went to two years ago. Yeah. Uh, Lower Columbia College. It was one of the first ones I did when I when I got to briefly meet and talk to Doug Jones, which was kind of cool. He is a freaking sweetheart. Um, there was a booth set up with people who made materials to make fursuits. Oh. And so they had like head blanks that you could then just put your fabric over and they had, yeah. yeah. I used to repair those and fix those and I'm build sure up those. Did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easter bunnies. I always had to fix right. their jaws. Okay. 
because, you know, I yes. guess it's cool to punch an Easter bunny in the face. Um, if you're an eight-year-old boy, probably actually eight probably isn't. Yeah. All this... Probably a little older than that. Although I did like coming back from the costume shop when everyone's returning their Easter bunnies and hearing all the stories of, oh my gosh, my kids screamed. They were terrified. <laughs> There's like right? a process of introducing children to... To, to a costume, a large costume animal. To the Easter Bunny. First you yeah. have to go see it outside. Oh, is that the Easter Bunny? And get them excited. See it from far away. Before approaching, you don't just go spring. Here. It's got forward-facing <laughs> eyes. It's a predator. <laughs> terrifying. But anyways, it's funny to hear the stories. You, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so. But, yes. I, I, I believe that. I definitely... You can tell the difference between the different head styles and types. And I, I definitely have grown appreciation for that but easter bunnies are my favorite <laughs> all right <laughs> looks like people are very oh, active hi it is very active hey connor d's did a super chat uh, donation of ten dollars thank you connor thank you connor yeah with 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 no um a bribing question to go along with it just straight <laughs> thank you connor <laughs> uh cardboard props with an apostrophe so cardboard props owns anyway cardboard props says i'm making a mandalorian armor that's very cool uh, good morning, Thanos. <laughs> so so glad he could drop in. <laughs> how how you doing? <laughs> I mean, is if let's see. So the so the snap happened real time in Infinity War, but then we jumped ahead five years to twenty twenty five or twenty twenty four for Endgame, if I remember right. So right now, Thanos is Turn, currently post snap or pre snap. Post post snap. Uh, possibly has destroyed the stones already, which which makes him um, uh, injured or, or almost handicapped because really bad burns. So how's how's the farm going? You are are you enjoying your your prickly purple things? Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Uh, and and even though you can't tell here on Reddit, I got snapped, so I was part of uh, in the soul stone. So I, I was one of the ones that that actually got snapped during the snapping. Oh. <laughs> no more making. That's sad. Kind of. Oh, that was funny. So Joe, who's in the shop all the time, he wasn't snapped. So between the two of us, it was like there's one on one side, one on the other. So is it Joe makes? <laughs> yeah. So now it's Joe makes, or Joden makes. Um, the whole thing with Reddit that was a little fun because they they set up the they set up the, the room for it. And everyone was in the same place for for threatening to being snapped, and they were all just kind of playing along. And then it ran a random, you know, coin flip. Deciding who was who was snapped and who wasn't. Yeah, I and if you that, you remember vaguely. seeing that, yeah. and if you were uh, chosen as being snapped, you were banned from that rabbit, from that Reddit thread because you yeah. don't exist anymore. <laughs> there is. Were you sanding in here? Um. I feel like there's the little particles from when you sand the little things, like just kind of floating. Not, not. Or is it this stuff was? It's probably this stuff. Yes. Okay. It's it, probably this stuff. It had a solid layer of the foam dust on it. Yeah. And then I wiped it off. Okay, that's why I'm like my eyes are itching. What is going on? Yeah, I foam. did a little bit of sanding, but that was a couple of days ago. I okay, think, so it was, it was 24 hours. This stuff sitting over there. With probably the foam that would make more sense. Okay. Me. Okay. I'm sorry. No worries. I just was like my eyes are feel like you know everything itches on your face way more now that you're never supposed to touch your face. Right. Right. <laughs> <sighs> Almost there on this, and then we're done with knitting, and we can actually start putting this together. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I know, we're building something, believe it or not. Believe it or not, we're building something. What are we building? Uh, so we're still working on... Uh, still, that almost sounds derogatory. So we are... Um, during the live streams, we're working on Witcher Armor. What we're doing is building the basic... Uh, vanilla Witcher 3 armor, the stuff you start with, because I figured it was the most recognizable. It's the most iconic. You see it. You, you know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and what inspired us to do this particular set of armor was getting this foam chain mail from Ben Eady and, and um, the foam armory. This is the same chain mail that you may have seen untested. Uh, William Shakespeare has done a video on it, making King Arthur's helmet. I know Punish Props and Evil Ted both have done videos just about it, as well as using it in builds. So uh, we've been using it in the live stream, and um, yeah, yeah, we've been making rectangles. <laughs> we've been making rectangles, yeah, and been doing it live. And this is episode three of doing large rectangles because the truth is, knitting, even chainmail. I'm sure knitting, as as a real act of knitting, goes by a lot faster. But this type of chainmail, it's it all is relative. It depends all. on how the 
The skill? The gauge of everything. Okay. It depends on how big the yarn is, how big the needles are, how gotcha. everything. And then it, whether it goes by really quickly or really... So how forever. accomplished are you at, at knitting and, and doing things? Like, do you think you could do a scarf? Yes. Do you think you could do a 17-foot scarf in multiple colors? <laughs> yes. Do you need a 17-foot scarf in multiple colors? I don't, but that's actually what Tom Baker had, the fourth doctor from Doctor Who. His scarf okay. specifically was 17 feet long because at the time, metric wasn't uh, quite being used, so it's, it's still labeled as 17 feet. Okay. And it's, it's, a, it's a number of earth colors because it's the 70s. Yes. <laughs> I don't need one, but it just no. Be, I know, but how else can we can we chew up you know twenty hours and ten weeks of, of, of live stream time? Oh, I know, we'll get a rocking chair and knit. <laughs> right. Oh, hey, Connor D's. Um, again, Connor's saying that his lightsaber turned out very well. Oh, good. Oh, were you the guy who was asking what a good starter prop was last stream? Oh, was that Connor? Was that? I don't remember. Sorry, but. Yeah, I think so. Um, so. Anyway, Connor is saying that... Uh, now, everyone else can read this as well, but this is my first time. Um, so he feels that he might be a bit overconfident, but nonetheless is going to, going to attempt making a DC-15C. If you could give me any tips and pointers, that'd be great. I would first have to look up to see exactly which blaster a DC-15C is. I don't have that memorized. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not you do, a... you still have to look it up because you right. will remember things wrong. Uh, having grown up in the uh, late 70s and early 80s, I know darn well what the DC-10 is because I think that was what? I think it was the early 80s when the, the, that particular airplane just started falling out of the sky. Uh, to make a joke about it isn't cool because obviously people got hurt. But there was a period of time there where the DC-10, I think it was probably only two, but there was a lot of, of problems and it got a lot of press because airplane crashes are, you know, press worthy and my dad had a t-shirt he had made because he kept doing business trips and he kept getting on a dc-10 so he got himself a t-shirt that said i survived the dc-10 <laughs> yes you know humor hmm. now isn't the boeing something else now um the 737 got Seven. got grounded for a while because of a software issue if i remember yeah. right yeah i anyway. don't know if it still is the dc-10 was literally oh the cargo bay door would pop off in flight and then the cabin would depressurize Oh, lovely. Yeah, so that was a bit of a problem. You know, <laughs> Indiana Jones, they survived that with like a life. <laughs> yes, they did. With, a, with an inflatable raft. <laughs> I think they did a Mythbusters on that. They did. <laughs> and it wouldn't work. No. <laughs> that's even that's even uh, ignoring, I mean, it's Mythbusters, they probably didn't. But since they were flying over the um, mountains near India, it was likely, you know, what's, that's the Andes, right? Yeah. So you're going to be extremely high altitude, thinner air to catch the uh, to catch that uh, raft yeah. for coming down. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a fun movie. I believed it. Oh, Battlefront Boy, what is it? Odin, can you turn down the slow mode? My, um, well, I could try turning on the slow mode. Let's see. And then uh, saying that he's not able to verify a Discord because you forgot his phone number. Well, I can't help you with your phone number, Battlefront boy. Dan does junk. Enjoy the weekend rain. Hopefully it didn't stop me from crafting. I work in my shed in a small heater, so it didn't stop you either. Uh, Dan, um, no, it didn't stop me. I was actually in here pretty much all weekend. Um, because, so, just last week, a little game came out. Are, are, are you familiar with, with the video games a little bit? A little bit. Uh, have, have you heard about this one that's been in development for like eight years? I don't know. It seems kind of futuristic. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Kind of kind of a little Blade Runner, Blade Runner, kind of a little very... It, it is cyberpunk, yeah. yeah. Saying, it's a little cyberpunk, but it is cyberpunk. I was kind of realizing I have a jacket that's similar to it, that other one. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I really like the jacket with that big collar. The big collar. Yeah, that Anyways. jacket's very cool. Ted, I don't know if he made that or if... I think Ted made that, the, the samurai jacket with a light-up collar. Yeah. Evil Ted. Anyway, that game finally came out, and I wanted to make a prop for it because you want to grab things that are popular and new. Um, I've been looking off and on for months as to what I wanted to make, mm -hmm. and it's pretty much just guns. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's guns or facial appliances that I didn't really want to do. Like There's, um, there's a whole clan of, of, of people that... One of the first things they do is remove their eyes and put in new sensors that give them a better field of vision. And it's like, okay, that's kind of neat, but there's all the damage that goes around the, the implant that's like, 
well, eh. Which I suppose I could skip, but anyway. And I don't, I, the only reason I do, don't do guns in the channel is how often they are restricted monetized by YouTube. So it becomes difficult to uh, work on something for a week and not get paid. Uh, so that's why I don't do guns. And eh, I still might. I just haven't. Nothing grabbed my attention. Anyway, then the game came out. And they delayed it a number of times, but they still pushed it a little bit to try and get it out for Christmas. Yeah. Because they promised. Well, it has bugs. Yeah, I heard. You know, lots of them. The Witcher had bugs because it's the same company yeah. that made it, right? Not, a, not that big of a deal, but... Everyone seemed really whiny and pissed because, oh my gosh, this, this game that's huge has bugs. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to get fixed. So anyway, I didn't want to catch any flack from, you know, I don't need to have hate on a video that I made because somebody's upset about bugs and something else. Okay, so you're giving it a minute. <laughs> so I'm giving it a minute. Find out what people actually want. Right, What exactly. the best gun is. I mean, what, what the, the best, best shooter. What the best, yeah, <laughs> maybe what the best gun is, what the best boomstick uh, the Mantis Blades really have my attention, but i got to be honest, I don't know how to... Because when the Mantis Blades open up, the entire arm opens up and drops down because it's got cybernetic muscles, yeah. right? Because when it's closed up, you look like you have normal arms, but this big, like, katana comes out of your arm. Right? So... I love how people think that things can just fit in this tiny space and right. it just... <laughs> yeah, anyways. Well, in game it works because you're replacing your entire arm to do yeah, it. Yeah, there's not an arm taking up space. No, you don't, have, all... you don't have any yeah. meat in the way. Right. Yeah. yeah, I would have meat in the way, and I'm not interested in removing my arm for cosplay. I'm not that dedicated. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so there's another show that came out last week. It was a new episode. It was the seventh episode, The Mandalorian. And uh, I was watching that. Now, I'm going to keep it spoiler free because I know not everybody has seen it yet. Probably. Uh, and, and it's just not cool to go, oh, and this happened. But in the show, there was a new helmet that I thought was really cool. And, of course, I was looking for a prop to make. So I was like, I'm going to make that. And that's I didn't get started on that until almost Friday night because I still had to help uh, a friend do uh, Beyond Geek Guy do something else with the sound booth. So I spent a good chunk of the day doing that. Okay. So it's done. Like, just an hour ago, I recorded the VO for the final video for this for this Wednesday, and the prop is done. I mean, you're here in the room listening to me ramble. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yay, we're getting done. Yay, we're getting done. I'm talking about it. <laughs> Are you going to show them? Sure, why not? Sneak peek. So I made this helmet because I liked it. It needs a little bit of pad on the inside. I purposely made it a little bit bigger, but it's, it's, I think I need to put a little bit of padding on the inside to, uh, to, to make it sit right and stay right. Yeah. But yeah. That's easy enough. It is easy enough. Just a, just a little bit of, a little ring of foam on the inside. That's easier than being tight. Yeah. And giving you a headache. Giving me a which, which yeah. would suck. So, so. No, that was solid. New, new Star Wars helmet. So the full video for this will be out, uh, Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. Thank you. I love how frowny it looks. I just... Well, it's the Stormtrooper frown. I, mean, I know. I like the Stormtrooper frown. It doesn't have the teeth is all. But yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. It's cool. And the other little Stormtrooper details it's got. It's got like the, the, the temple knockout on the side. And then it has the, the, the hint of, of Clone Trooper angle going down the front. But um, yeah. And uh, something I didn't realize that um, uh, Jerry actually uh, pointed out to me over, over text... This helmet originally appeared in Rogue One. Oh, so it's a pre-existing helmet. So it's a pre-existing helmet. So yeah. Uh, it just got it, some more attention. It just got more attention. I, I finally noticed it. So Because I didn't notice it in Rogue One. It was, it was a white helmet there. Sometimes the best costume designs are the, de the designs you don't notice because right. it's right. <laughs> Squid stick. I have a question. What's the Witcher? I don't know, some video game, book series, TV show. TV show, yeah. Yeah. Something. Something. About some guy. Oh, the DC-15C is the clone blaster. The big one? The big clone blaster? Sorry, I'm going back to reading. Uh, That's Eric, okay. That Eric, Connor D's. Yeah, if it's the clone blaster, it's 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 like the size of an MG-42. It's, yeah, oh, it's a meter and a quarter long or so. I mean, it's, you know... Yeah. 
four feet, five Just feet long. Just because it's a big prop doesn't no. mean it's a hard prop. No, it's not. But, uh, all right, cool. Um, it's been a while. That would be... I would almost get something that's got the right handle grip to start with because it's, it's still got kind of a pistol grip, if I remember right. It's not, it's not a stock like a rifle. It's got still got kind of a pistol grip and trains. And... Right on time. Right on time. I'm talking. I haven't stopped. <laughs> um, so the, the pistol grip, because you're going you're gonna to be holding on to it, right? If you're actually going to cosplay with it and not just hang out on the wall, you're going to want to make sure that whatever grip you're using is going to be able to support that much barrel coming out the front. Uh, it's going to have, it's going mean, to... It has to be balanced. It has to be balanced or it's front heavy. Either way, it's fine. Just don't make the, the, the grip out of just four layers of floor mat foam. It's, you're going to be upset. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. You can cut the profile out of plywood and put foam on the sides to bulk it up. That'd be fine. If but you, can, you need some support. You need some support. You can you can cut the, the stock off of a Nerf gun. Um, yeah, something. I made a Sandman gun for Halloween. Sandman from Logan's Run uh, for a friend. God, that was 20 years ago. Um, because he was, he was going to do it really quick as a costume for Halloween. Because the Sandman from the 74 Logan's Run is just a black jumpsuit. But there's a uh, like Heather sweatshirt material that's that's quilted stitched across the front. Okay. That denotes them as the Sandmen, as the police, because everyone else in the society is wearing bright colors. And then they have a, a like a mock turtleneck. But they have this this sleeper gun. It's it's just a, a black skinny gun that uh, sprayed a little bit of fire out the out the end, and that's what would um, basically when people were trying to to leave this utopian society because I think at 25 your They're, life was terminated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the salmon were the ones to make sure that people behaved and, and followed the rules. Uh, I bought a garden sprayer, just one of the one of the nozzles. It was a plastic nozzle you put in the end of a hose. I uh, took the parts off, filled in all the ribs because it was a plastic sprayer okay, uh, with Bondo. Okay. And then uh, that's how I did the grip for the, his Sandman gun. The rest of it was PVC and bits and pieces. But yeah. uh, no, that's it was a, a perfect little build. trigger. Oh yeah, it worked great. Yeah. It looked great. And of course, it, it had no moving parts, so it was no big deal to take yeah. it places. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm scatterbrained because I was up late making sure that I got my script written and, and I got my prop built, so I'm probably going to be very ADD bounce around boy. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi. It's Hi. Monday. It's Monday. <laughs> I've been doing this for a few weeks. One of these days, I'll actually get a good night's sleep before the live stream. Uh, Chocolate Milkman asked if I've considered making power armor from Fallout. Yes, same exact story I just told about Cyberpunk 2077. I was going to make the, um, uh, was it the T-51? I don't know. It's the, oh, I'm forgetting the designation. It's the 51 power armor helmet, the one that came with the Fallout 76 collector's edition. Um, I was going to make one of those. I started buying the parts for it. And then Fallout 76 launched, and everybody hated on it. And I don't want to catch flack on my channel of hate that's going somewhere else. So I set the parts aside and made something else. <laughs> hmm. uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff's 3D model, not possessive, but Jeff 3D models, Jeff's 3D models, it's all one word, um, <laughs> asks if the bo -Katan helmet fits Felicia. Oh yeah, I was taking pictures. That thing's huge on me. Is it huge on you? I don't know. I don't know if you want to... Uh... I know you put makeup on today, so I don't know if you want to... Okay. All right, yeah. It if, works. It works. If you had a full set of armor with the shoulder pads and everything else, it probably wouldn't look that bad. Honestly, I think I just need to put a... Not a... Um, just a... Beanie. A beanie? Yeah. A beanie with the edges rolled up. <laughs> You know, it's probably all you need for the other helmet. That's... Exactly, yeah. Okay. Just a beanie with the edges rolled off. It gives you just that little ledge for it to sit on top of. Okay. And then I think this would fit. Nice. So. Right, because it doesn't fit me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me guess, you used your little head form instead. Uh, I, I, I used the head cast from Seth, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, it's the dust. Let's see. There we are. That's, that's as good as I can get. <laughs> that's resting okay. on, yeah. The dust. I shouldn't have done oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. The dust. It's okay. I hope you're not develop, de developing. I hope you're not developing a allergy to the EVA dust. No, it's not an allergy. I'm just. It. 
It's more noticeable today. It's in my eyeball. I got one in my, you know, like it started off with something in my eye and it just hasn't gone away. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm done complaining. <laughs> so Jeff 3D Models was asking if you could try the helmet, so hopefully it'll, it says it'll make his day. Uh, Odin, check the Discord. Right! Odin's scatter ring. Which one? Get out. Um, uh, I don't know if I got that. I got, for those of you who noticed, I had a cracked phone. I bought a new phone. I've got the Pixel 4 right now. I haven't fully set Switched everything over. up on it yet. Yeah, Mine's coming in the mail. That's cool. I'm so over having an iPhone. Shh, don't tell. <laughs> okay. Okay. What is this doing now? I'm trying to get to the Discord. Connecting. I don't need to connect anything. You can't because now it's like, hey, I know you have a new phone. Right, but I'm still connected to the Wi-Fi, so the Discord should work. <clears throat> oh, yeah, look at that. A lot of stuff going on. Lord Khan is asking, uh, I just want to know when the next Mecha Godzilla build would be. I'm looking at it being next week, although it might get pushed to the last week. It all depends on how things play out uh, this next it's week. It's the holiday season. Yeah, there's this whole, like... Christmas thing coming up, holiday season, and for anyone who's interested in keeping score, the 20th is my wedding anniversary. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to work around all of that. Yeah. Which, I'm not complaining. I'm happy that I get a wedding anniversary. But, uh, yeah. It's a good time of year. <laughs> it is a good time of year. But, nice and busy. Uh... Ooh, Josh, <laughs> Josh C. Wee. Oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce uh, J-O-S-C-W-E. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, uh, just says, Odin, I'm not going to make a live stream today. Well, that's okay. Hello from the past, because I'm sure you're watching it later. Um, I was wondering if I'd ever do any Stargate props. And... Not opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it. Honestly, when I'm when I'm not planning ahead and doing a mad rush for, what am I going to do? Stargate doesn't come to mind. Which is sad, because I enjoyed the show. I actually paid for satellite TV just so I could watch Stargate when that was first running. Um, I would be totally down for doing a uh, Helmet of Ra or, or uh, the Anubis Helmet. Uh, the Zat Gun wouldn't be too bad. I know somebody at one point asked about the staff. But anyway, yeah, no, Stargate's cool. And isn't there something in the works, something Stargate coming back? Uh, it's never out of the realm of possibilities. No, it never is. It's science fiction, everything comes back. I think, I think there is. Let's make sure I'm in the right room. Next Monday is live stream. I'm not in the right room. <laughs> <clears throat> Nicole says, I'm a huge MCU fan, so let me break it down for you. First, five years after the snap was 2023. Second, at this time, Thanos was on the farm and the stones weren't destroyed because it was a good a month or two after the snap that he snapped to get rid of the stones. Got it? Almost. But you're contradicting yourself. At this time, Thanos was on the farm, and the stones weren't destroyed. A month or two after the snap would be two years ago, Nicole. Right? Uh, <laughs> now I'm all sorts of confused. Right. I'm still following it mostly, but yeah, yeah. I, see, I see I got the dates wrong. Uh, it's a tank trooper helmet. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Uh... The DC-15 is actually the clone pistol. <laughs> it's not the it's not the giant. Um, oh, that one's a really clean looking sword. Yeah, is that gonna? It kind of works. I'm trying. That's out of focus, isn't it? So are my eyes. So it's hard. But anyway, um, yeah, that's the DC-15 pistol. So that's that's what Khan's talking about. Oh, okay. You really do gotta just look things up. I do. I can pretend I know what I'm talking about, and then I look it up and go, oh, no, that was black, not brown. <laughs> it's all good. It's going to look great. Oops. Sorry to trip. So, yes, the tank trooper helmet. <laughs> yeah. um, Got to finish. You want me to work? The grommets. You want, you want me to actually Isn't do that what we're doing? We're trying to actually <laughs> make a project, you know? All right, sure. The grommets and stuff oh, are right over there. Still right? Okay. right there. Got a bunch of high. I sleep. 
Do you think you'll make anything more cartoony, Simpsons or such? Like, well, didn't you just do Darkwing Duck? Yeah, but that was almost two months ago now. Two Um, months ago. I know. So (laughs) yesterday's news. Eight props. Uh, Yeah, I'll do something cartoony again eventually. One day. Um, Hi, hi. Oh. Hi. Secretly watch your live stream while at work at a desk job. (laughs) Okay. Very cool. I like live streams while I work. Yeah. I like to do it while I hem. I watch a lot of uh, recorded live streams. Yeah. Never actually, like, make them live. There's that. Oh, yeah, here we are. Okay. So this is, um... PrimeGuy98 says, (laughs) check Instagram, not Discord, for the fursuit pictures. So... Which is like, less talky-talky, more (laughs) worky-worky. Is that what she's saying? It says that right there. Connor Cook says that. Oh, Connor Cook says that. I just was laughing. (laughs) Right, right, right. A little too close to home? (laughs) Congratulations. Yeah, that's very cool. I can, since I got the camera set wrong, I can try it. That's the... High five. Yes. Well, high four. (laughs) Very cool. Fursuit. All of them would have made... Well, it's it's worse. Like you got th- you got three toes. No, I know. Then I was like, well, would it make it like high eight, high nine? No. High nine? Well, it's just no, one it's hand. Five. It is five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. I was overthinking it. It's all right. High five. High five. Mega JP. Not the grommets. <laughs> Not the grommets. Not the grommets. Man, I love the original Wicker Man. <laughs> not the bees. <laughs> Which, that's not the original Wicker Man, so don't want to confuse people. I'll get these put on. I got more show and tell to bring out. Oh, did all the stuff actually come in the mail now? No, no, no. Just, um, I got something else. I got a few other things in the mail. Oh, I, sh- yeah. I showed you most of that before we started. But, oh, uh, I forgot. That's all right. You know, now there's people here. <laughs> Which, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Maker JP. So, let's get, I'll get the, there's only a couple of these. I'll get the four that are here in. I guess, no, you can tell me we got silver ones. Yeah, don't the, you? Right there. That are the same size? I thought they were. That's why we got the... Okay. I might be lying. Is it this one? I thought the silver ones were... The wrong size? Were the slightly smaller size. They might be. And I don't think this is the case for them anyway. This is for the ribbons. Promise in your thing. This is just snaps. Okay. Yep. Yep. These are all just big heavy duty snaps from Tandy. Okay. (laughs) I never got to Walmart. I never thought about it. I was grossed out when I was at Walmart. Well, that's understandable. Right now is a time to be grossed out for being at Walmart. I don't know. There was like the lady with all her kids just coming up in my space, breathing on me. I had to get out of there. That's all good. I don't know. It's like, okay, enjoy your space over there. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm out. Right. And that's why I didn't get grommets. <laughs> I couldn't. I was done. Okay, so what's people say? Endgame takes place in 2023. Still playing a PS4. That means PS5 still is having problems and no one can get their hands on them. Crazy. <laughs> that makes me laugh. I love how you just make the stuff you do. Thank you. Thank you. Could you make the armor's helmets from Mandalorian store? Sorry for all caps, but I'm just trying to get your attention. <laughs> so I, many I, projects. So many projects. I did see that. I do like the... So the, the armor, her helmet's got the horns on it like Darth Maul. And I can't remember the race's name. It's like... Z, it starts with a Z. I'll say it wrong. I do like her helmet. Uh, I thought about it. <laughs> It's on the list of on the list. possibilities. It's funny, there's just so many Mandalorian helmets I could do and still skip dims. That's great. <laughs> right? Um, not 
got the grommets. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Let's make her JP, right? Yep. Yep. Make him under control, Felicia. Ha 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 ha. Maker JP is our friend that sent us the the three D print. He's the he's the guy that worked, oh. on, worked on season two. This guy, yeah. our little mascot. So so everyone, you know, we're working on stuff from The Witcher. He worked on The Witcher. The Witcher. <laughs> yeah. And uh, cool, right? Very cool. Yeah. Um, take a shot every time Odin says right, and Felicia says. But good thing I don't drink, LOL. So they're turning this into a uh, drinking game. That's kind of a good idea, right? 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 Right. <laughs> well. So I'm out of grommets. <laughs> that's all right. No, I did it on the left side. No, I know. <laughs> but I tried to do it at the top because you might be able to start working on, on getting how you the placement to do the... of the. Yeah. If anyone wants to run out to Walmart and get us another set of grommets, we'll let you in the door so we can keep doing it, okay? So, so uh, Dan, Dan does jump. You're local, right? Yeah, if you can get here within the next hour, not only can you be on a live stream, but bring us some, some grommets, and that'd be great. <laughs> I like them when they're not over squished. Did I. No, like this one was super squished. Well, that was the first one. I just no, mashed, I know. I mashed the snot out of it. Right? But part of me is just as curious now that we have the right anvil right. for the smaller size. Oh. Because we over squished that one with right. the wrong anvil and the wrong shape. If that actually would, it's just curiosity in me if that would work. Yeah. Not that the. The holes are too big now. They need a match, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's not for this project. But seven sixteenths inch extra large eyelets, eleven millimeter eyelets. Yep, from from Dritz. Dritz. <laughs> Dritz, which Walmart's the only other place that carries these. This is a standard sewing notion. You might find them at other places too, but I like that brand. Yeah, I recognize it. Used to get it all the time from Hancock Fabrics when they were still alive. Yeah, well, here. Here. They don't ex. They don't. They Do still exist elsewhere. No, I. Well, you are know, I gone don't gone? know. I thought they were gone, gone because the two or three locations in Sacramento closed. So I know. to me, that means they all did. But oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Okay. Let's see. Odin's my favorite person. That's what Jesse T. Hood says. Thank Jesse you, Jesse. T. Jr. T. Jr.? I don't know. T. Hood Jr. T. Hood Jr. Felicia, do you have a prop you've been badgering Odin to make? No, I don't really badger you to make props. No, I think you do, actually. No, no. You, you, you asked a few times when we were working on productions, but yeah. just just for your own entertainment or for your own costume It's purposes. more like I come in here and I'm like, I have this thing that I'm trying to make. Okay, yes. <laughs> and then sometimes... And sometimes I accept the side quest. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I need to make a giant needle that stabs into somebody. <laughs> right. That was on my Instagram. I got pictures. So she had yeah. this really cool antique hypodermic needle. Huge, like 300 cc. I think it's something that they like, use for turkey base. You know, like... Yeah, it could be that. It could have been a, like a turkey it basing. It was big metal big. with the... It was and, and it had did it have rings for the two fingers yeah. and a ring for your thumb to, to yeah. do all the it was pretty gnarly looking. So um, I reworked the plunger, didn't I? Yeah. I don't think I I don't think I No, it was the, the it was the needle that you reworked so that when you stabbed it it had a um, spring behind it so it looked like it poked in. Right, I remember doing that and I was using some of like um, it had the same thread that the ball inflation device does on an air compressor for river right which yeah. surprised me it was it, it fit um so i used that to make the to make the thing but then i had to redo something with the plunger so when the needle goes into the hypodermic now you you've got this needle yeah you needed to push a tube around it so you didn't push it into the actor because you're you're compressing stuff from both sides into the same yeah. tube yeah. So, I don't really badger you to make anything, no. but every once in a while I have a random project and be like, hey, yo, Odin, I'm trying to figure out how to make this work. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, okay. Can you make the Star Trek foam ears you can slide on your own ears? Nicole used to make, have some of those, you know, the little ears yeah. that you fold. Um, I have actually used Algenet to cast my friend's ears, I've done this for I think three different people, to make Vulcan ears that were then slush molded uh, from latex, meaning you just brush the latex inside the plaster mold. 
and then you get a little custom made appliance of the of the ear tips you can glue on. And uh, yeah, so I've done that. I think for three different people. Well, that was a long time ago too. Do a video. <laughs> okay, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, hello. It's not a bad idea. What are they making? I just got on the live stream. Well, not much <laughs> right now. Hello! Who was saying that? Um, Aaron Spears. Hello, Aaron Spears. Welcome to the live stream. What are we making today? We are continuing our quest to make the uh, initial Witcher 3 armor. This is the vanilla armor, the one you start the game with. Um, Felicia is putting together some uh, chain mail. Wow, my brain isn't working. Uh, we need to do a chain mail because there's a lot of chain mail on the armor and the foam chain mail is what inspired us to do the whole thing. So uh, it's, it's kind of fitting that, that that's what's happening today. Yeah. Yeah. Getting there. Getting there. Kind of in a hurry. You had a couple more rows to do, right? Yeah, you... I needed about two more inches because and... I am just about there. But Okay. Do you need more of these popped out? Nope. Okay. But we are going to have to glue and dry brush them because we cool. have the one piece we did the other day. Right. That needs to get attached to the front. This is the back. Okay. But part of me is wondering how... Do we need to paint these black first so red doesn't shine through? That's kind of what in my head I was wondering if we should do that. But then part of me was like, well, should we back it in the vinyl other than I don't want to glue this to the... That, well, we, but then you could sew it. We but didn't we glue, sew this. Did we glue it in the middle? Oh, we did glue it in the middle, didn't we? It's glued yeah, all down. We okay. glued it all the way down. Not that you have to. We could just right. do it around the edges. But... That, that's... Not that I'm prepared to do it right now, but that whole other thought. So, I wonder if we could add, like, India ink or something to contact cement to make the contact cement black. And then we're not adding contact cement on top of paint. What we're actually we painting it black. Did? Um, the context of it, well, okay, I'm first thing out of my mouth, it won't stick the plastic dip. Context of it will dissolve the mask plastic dip, so that'd be interesting. That's, yeah. I don't know. No, no, you're, it's not. A, but we could totally, like, that's the problem, it's bright red. Yep, well, I can just, I can grab some, some paint and just paint it black. But Probably I the think thing to I do. am going to do one more row after this one's attached, and then we can start like attaching them. So okay, so I probably should get on that. Make this not red. <laughs> Although having red contrasting coming through, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, but mm. I've been on a couple shoots when 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 our, our our host she had to go put on a dark undershirt so you couldn't see her light bits underneath the sweater. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He could look like he has, uh, like, magma abs. Magma abs. That's kind of what I'm just... Uh... Can you make a PS5 out of foam? <laughs> not functional. <laughs> not functional? No, I said not functional yes. is what I said. You are correct. <laughs> Felicia is 100% correct. Yes, we can, and it would be not functional. But apparently we can sell on the internet for $1,000 still anyway. Connor Cook has a functional prop idea for you. Large platform shoes to Felicia, for Felicia during the live streams, LOL. Oh. <laughs> Joke's on you, so I own a pair, but choose to use this. <laughs> yeah, it's more comfortable. Hello from Malaysia. Hello oh, from Brazil. Hello Malaysia. Hello Brazil. It's awesome. Hey Odin and Felicia. So I'm close to graduating high school and I want to want and I want into a degree where I can make props and things in the future. I'm curious if you guys know what I should go into. Not debt. No, <laughs> sorry. Brutal. Um, um, what's funny is neither one of us did. Well, I went into fashion design. Yeah, you, you, actually, you actually graduated and have a degree. Yeah, and I did work with a lot of people who got their film degrees. Okay. And they're working on sets and in the thing, but that's not necessarily for prop making. Right. And theater, you get sent into prop building, but I don't really feel like that really expands... 
Right, because yeah. it's, a, it's a slightly different beast. The, yeah. the level of what you need to see. I mean, theater will definitely teach you problem solving, how to do stuff quickly. Yeah, like it's always the production and the show, so there's nothing wrong with that. Right. And there's nothing wrong with the film degree. It's Yeah, but, but specifically say, oh yeah, you do this and this and this. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Good luck. I took a puppetry class. That was one of the things I did that, that, that first brought my attention to context I met in foam. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, community college. I took so many classes, and then before I knew it, I had a degree in fashion. So. Oh, there you go. Um, I suggest trying out classes at community college before, like... Right. <laughs> going into major debt, not knowing what you fully want to do. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like at community college, I got to get into everything into their magazine program <laughs> where uh -huh. we got to do art critiquing we got into jewelry design fashion design right puppetry um theater this um, reminds me a little bit something else you could do that's not the same as getting a degree or getting getting to the school for it um specifically i'm thinking about the dallas makerspace because they have a jewelry section but there also there's a full machine shop and the, and the wood shop and everything else so uh at a makerspace that is also a very much a learning environment. Uh, I don't know what type of makerspace you'll have in the in the area that you're in, but um, you can always make a makerspace. You can always make a makerspace. Uh, one of the big things with the makers in a makerspace is making sure. I'm not trying to make that kind of a pun again. Um, it's a learning environment. They want to teach other people their skills, and so the guy that did the dark saber was someone who learned how to be a machinist or a machine operator. Uh, at the Dallas Makerspace, and he was happy to sit there and put this thing together for us because he learned the skills to do it there. Maybe that's something to look into because that is a place that you can go to. You can learn at your own pace. You can learn all sorts of really esoteric things probably fairly quickly, and it's going to be less debt. <laughs> Eric Vision says, I don't know anyone who actually works in the field they went to college for, LOL. I technically do. You technically do. And yep. I have. Yeah. Technically, for since I've graduated, still don't make any money to pay off my debt. But, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, got lots of highs and a hello from England. Got Tony Stark saying hi oh. and Naju and Squid Stick and Kevin. <laughs> so hi, all of you guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, on Discord, I've got someone telling me to tell. Yeah, finally again, here it is. Someone saying to say hi to Joe. Oh, there it is. Oh, and Nicole. Tell Joe I said hi. Uh, I'd be happy to. Joe's not here today. He wasn't feeling terribly well, so he didn't come in today. Uh, not that he's actually sick. He's just taking a day to take care of, the, of his house. So. Uh, Where's let's the see. other bit that we started? Is this going to work? No, it's still too far away. What other bit we started? The, 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 the stuff we needed last time. Oh, it's probably over here on the table saw? Oh, okay. So we both walk off camera. <laughs> We're doing stuff. We're trying. All right, is this going to be any better? Mm, I don't think, still don't think that's quite in focus. You know, I probably should try and focus it closer. That'd be better. I'm going to need help with doing that. I got pictures Nicole wants to share, but I need to uh, figure out where my focal point is on the camera. So let's go here. Yeah, I can reach over to the camera. It's my focus card. So it's not always easy on, on, on the different cameras on the tiny LCD screen to see if your picture's actually in focus or not. So you get a focus card and when it's at the right uh, point, the very center of the, of the starburst it, um, it's all in focus, I don't know how else to put it right now, but when you move it out of focus, like it gets too close, it should start making a halo around the center because the, uh, the, the converging uh, contrast of the lines blur and, and becomes this like donut shape and it starts to lose the, the point. And the same thing if it goes too far back. So I was just checking on, on number two. So this is where I was having a close up. You can see it's totally out of focus, but if I come closer, so I moved the focal plane to be kind of right here. So it was an attempt to be able to uh, show off Nicole is trying to show me the Mandalorian helmet that she's working on. My phone isn't terribly bright, so this is really hard to see. That's not very fair. But oh, that's great. That's going to work well. Because I'm prepared. 
One of these days, I'll get a laptop and we'll be able to just change the Discord instead of trying to shove my phone into the camera because, you know, <laughs> stuff. We did it once. It's we did it once. I'm not finding the... <laughs> You're not finding the pieces we did? No. What, the... The one that was already knit before this one. Really? <laughs> really. I found all the extras. It's not there. <laughs> walk by a pro camera. That's the vinyl you just picked up. Right. Oh, so we're super organized. <laughs> okay. Oh. Got that. <laughs> oh, Bruno left his coat here. Bruno left his coat here. Yeah. Odin, I'm your big fan from Bangladesh. That's Paya oh. Chikma. Chakma. Hello. Who gave a dislike? Ovidu. Avidu? Would like to know how can I join Discord? Uh, my Discord is set up for my patrons. And anybody who is at, uh, I think, the Odin Listens level or higher gets access to the Discord. So there you go. And hopefully I'm not too far away from the mic and you can hear me when I was trying to tell you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, where did that go? What the heck? Wow, soy too fan. Oh, thank you, Samuel. Tony Stark wants to know, how are you, Felicia? I'm doing great, thank you. Good evening from Germany. Good evening. Odin, that focus card got him dizzy. Got oh. Dan does junk dizzy. Sorry, Dan. Speaking of, how are Bruno and Toby? They did want to be here, but it's raining, and I just didn't want to play with muddy dogs, <laughs> is the truth of it. But they're here in spirit. They wanted to be here for sure. What are you? You can't find it either, can you? No. <laughs> no, I can't. That's weird because I was trying to keep everything together. <laughs> okay. At least I'm not losing my mind. No, no, you're, you're good. Just the chain mail. That's okay. We still have to wait for paint to dry before we can glue it down anyways. Right. Well, I, I can get painting, but yeah. that's... Crazy, right? Very. Oh, no, it's messy, moved. but it's not that messy. What if we got moved into the paint room? That could have been it. Odin, can you make Optimus Prime helmet? Well, you did Bumblebee. That's on the list, right? It's on the list, yeah. Any Spider-Man props you want to make? Well, you made the web slinger. Yep. I made the, the web slinger, the web shooters, as seen in uh, Homecoming. And I'm still getting comments, but they don't shoot. <laughs> Which, they've got to be troll comments, but yeah. But if you can make them shoot, please make a video. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't wanna, exactly. I would watch it. <laughs> I think we had this conversation, yes. <laughs> Felicia and Odin from Alaska. Good morning. Good morning. Are they technically after us? Yes. Yeah, yeah Alaska is after us. They're because they poke out. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're not Pacific time. They're they're ahead uh, or behind. An hour or so. Yeah. I think the camera lens is dirty. LOL. This whole place is dusty. So. This whole place is dusty. <laughs> Good luck. Sorry. Um. Uh, cute quahi. I can't pronounce that. Quahi. Piggies. Hi, I'm a new subscriber. Well, thank you. Thank you. you. Know, not everybody can be a Patreon, but subscribing and liking does make a difference. It does. So, thank you. I don't, I don't ever want to make it sound like I'm, I'm not appreciative of anyone who subscribes. Thank you. Yes. No, we do. It makes a difference. Watching Odin pass across the camera looks like a carnival game. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> it's 2.53 a.m. in Bangladesh. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say in Alaska. It's like, what? <laughs> no. No, that's not the right time zone. No. 
So, but in Bangladesh, okay. If we're painting on the foam, this is my question. Yeah. And then we're gluing on the foam. Right. There's a layer of paint between the actual foam. And the actual, and the glue. And the other foam that you want to glue together. Yep. Does that affect it? It can. Um, does it peel off? Does it flake off? Does it, is it shitty? Is it okay? Does it make a big difference? Am I overthinking it? All the above. <laughs> All of the above. No, it's great. You had a good, good, good set of rapid fire questions. Obviously, I'm just going for it, not worrying too much about it. If I was using a cement solvent that required plastic to go to plastic, and this would create a barrier and it would glue shitty. Um, but I'm pretty sure that with the acrylic paint, if I don't put it on thick like house paint, um, it's going to have a, a good enough grip for the for the chain mail on top of the paint that's on top of the foam. If this was, because uh, in addition, we're going to sew around all the edges, right? Right. Okay. So if if I was to paint this piece and then put a rhinoceros horn on it, and I expected the rhinoceros horn to stay there, well, if, the, if it was a bottom and the whole bottom was all making contact, that wasn't just a ring, it probably would. But, yeah, it would be shaky as, as to exactly how well it is. It, 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 um, I don't think the contact cement would peel up off of the paint. I think it's going to stick fine to, to okay. the acrylic. But it is absolutely my habit to not glue over paint because you're just gluing to paint and then it's only as strong as the paint is. Yes, but this is red. But this is red. And it has to be blacked. Yep, or brown, blacked. Or, yeah. <laughs> Black is better. I feel like after this whole thing's done, I, we just got to get coffee grounds and just kind of rub them into the chain mails to give it that real dirty grimy look okay because it's Geralt and this he always looks freaking clean <laughs> like he is so clean in the video game and he's clean on the tv show and everyone comments about how stinky he is <laughs> and how gritty right. and gross and dirty and I'm just saying <laughs> how many memes with him taking a bath <laughs> yeah. anyway okay coming from someone who has not watched the show, sorry Maker JP, uh, I just haven't taken the time, or ever played the game, or or read the book. Uh, but I know a lot of cosplayers, <laughs> and I know the characters, <laughs> and, and I'm a fan of Roach on, on top of your hut. That horse is great. <laughs> I'm going to get a paintbrush too. Okay. Where does this one work? This should all work. No, but... <laughs> you can use that one, yes. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to ask? Pretty much. When The Witcher is all done, any plans for another live stream project? Yes. Yes. Um, well, okay, no. Yes, we will continue to live stream. Yes, Felicia is welcome to continue to live stream on Mondays with me for as long as she wants to. Right now she's got Mondays off, which is partly why we chose Monday. Yeah. Um, but I will continue with it no matter what. Uh, when the time comes, we will settle on a project, but uh, right now, I don't think we have 100%. We haven't? Yeah. Yeah. Just getting through this one. Yep, just gotta get through this one. I wouldn't even be opposed to having uh, other people come on, you, you know, once yeah. or twice here and there. I, I'm absolutely happy that you've been able to come by every single week for a couple of months now. Yeah, and, it's been and fun. Do this. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> I like that this one doesn't have that pressure of, I need it done last week. Right? <laughs> or apparently any week. <laughs> apparently. No pressure. No pressure. So now I'm actually working. It's going to be harder for me to pay attention to the Discord. And I can't read the chat from here, so. Oh, okay. Not that you have to. Yeah. But no, yeah, totally. We'd be, we'd be down for continuing with some of the live stream build. Uh, one person I had talked to a couple of times, I don't know if you guys have any interest in this, um, but his name is Jeff. He actually is part of the McVengers. He's the um, Strange Jack, so he does the Jack in the Box, Doctor Strange crossover. Uh, mix up, that might be a better way to put it. Um, anyway, he's his other hobby is blowing glass beads. And uh, he's got a setup that's uh, portable because he usually does it for the, like the Dickens Fair. And he had expressed interest in coming down and doing um, glass bead blowing as 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 a as a thing. Oh, nice! Yeah, and I think that'd be a lot of fun as a live stream. Um, I have always been fascinated with glass work. 
whether it's like stained glass windows or right. the melting glass jewelry. Again, all classes you can take at community college here. Right. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and probably some maker spaces. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but support community college. Don't just bypass them. Yeah, no, I, I fully support my community college, and I'm very lucky that we had such a good system here. In fact, the American River College one, I think, has a maker space. We were yeah. looking at that for the laser cutting, yeah. 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 And also, at least the, the community college here in Sacramento, um, they have an agreement with a couple of different UCs that the classes you take and, and some of the stuff you've got done beforehand are transferable. Yeah. 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 So my, my wife actually did her, uh, and, and son actually did their first two years of college um, at American River and then went on to different UCs and finished it, finished everything out. Yep, I went to American River Sex, all of the Los Rios ones. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I haven't been reading what people have been saying. I haven't either, it's all right. Figured to get this painted up and then uh, I've got some show and tell. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Right. Look at we're halfway through. Yeah. It's exactly the halfway mark. It's exactly the halfway mark. It's the halfway mark. That's amazing. It's already halfway through. Right. So as the radio, you know, it's top of the hour, and welcome to the Odin Makes live uh, live stream. It's the live cast because yeah, that's gonna work. Welcome to the Odin Makes live stream where we make words up and they don't matter. Um, what we're doing today is painting red foam black because I see a piece of red foam and I want to paint it black. Um, we're working on the Witcher armor and this is going to be a backing plate for the foam chainmail, which was the inspiration for the Witcher armor. Uh, joining me today is my friend uh, Felicia. She's uh, ish87 on Instagram. Uh, we've known each other for many years. We actually met working on another YouTube channel called Smosh where um, at the time she was doing wardrobe and initially I came in as grip and very quickly moved into art department where I worked for a, a number of years. So um, it's kind of nice that I still get to see you. Yeah, we keep bumping bad, so. Yep. Now I get to meet all your fans. Now you get to meet all my fans. <laughs> Be careful, you make a lot of friends they are going to insist you do your own stuff. Uh, it's so much easier to do it for other people. <laughs> yes, yes it is. <laughs> so one of the questions I had earlier today also was, uh, what about the Godzilla build? Um, yeah, I'm looking at starting the chest. Probably going to start it this week. I just don't know if I'm going to finish it, which sounds funny, because I have to have a video done next week. No, it's not shot yet. Um, but I've had a couple of different ideas, and, and so definitely going to be starting it. Um, just juggling the holidays with coming up. So, be getting the chest done for uh, Mecha Godzilla, the chest and the neck. Yeah, that's kind of the big bulk of it, though. Like, it is, yeah, kind the of. The head's the hardest because it's the getting going. It, it absolutely is, the, and it's and it's the thing that kind of has to look the making up words the rightest. Uh, <laughs> it really does have to have. It sets the tone for the rest of the build. There you go. And then. After you get kind of the big chest piece on it, then it's the details in the arms and legs. And it, that one, right. there's and, two. And there's still big pieces because, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, there's still, like, the, the entire legs are basically pants. I'm only going from the waist up. I'm not building the full body yet because yeah. there's definitely a, a, an easily seen divis, divisible line between the upper half and the lower half of Mecha Godzilla. So you can do Mecha Godzilla in a car scene. Yep, yep. You do Mecha Godzilla in a car scene, chasing like Robocop. down Robocop. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be, I'll be doing that as a separate piece. But um, one of the fun things of the build, you know, to me as well, is that he's got the classic uh, robot accordion arms. Not the full arms, but the joints. So the shoulder yeah. joint and the elbow, as well as the knees and the upper thighs, not the ankles. Um, they all have, it looks like the, the squeeze box portion of, the, of, of an accordion, where it's got uh, yeah. like a, a metal band and then... Um, fabric that, that tapers in and comes out and connects so he's got that mobility. It always reminds me of the back of the dryers. <laughs> yes. The, the, the tubey things. Yes, very much like that. Uh, so that's something that I was kind of hoping maybe, I have an idea on how to do it, but I still might that's ask your opinion uh, as well as uh, I need to borrow your machine again to do some sewing. Yeah, 
it's one of those ones you gotta chew on, figure out how you're yeah. gonna do it, and then when you actually get into it, it's completely... throw all those plans out the window and do what works. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> or what you can get done. Yep. with one inch brushes. Right. All right. You done? I've got a little bit of my hand. Yep. But that's all right. So I've got my piece pretty much black. There's a little bit of red that pokes through. I can see the light now as I'm because I went to it sloppy. It's gonna be fine though. Because we're putting other stuff on top of it and then dry brushing it silver and it's yeah. gonna be fine. But we're painting our project today with Plaid FX paints. Plaid FX paints is a particular type of paint that is made specifically to bond with EVA foam. It remains flexible uh, and it does have nothing of a slight bonding agent. So it won't peel off of the foam and it'll actually help seal the foam a little bit. One of the reasons why I'm okay using this to go underneath the, the contacts tonight. But I'm doing all this as, as, a, as a mock joke, although it's not a joke. We are really using this. I really do like this paint because I have a show and tell today that came from Plaid. Here's something that showed up that I didn't order. I didn't ask for. I don't know what it is. Yay for swag. <laughs> Yay for swag. Careful, don't get paint on it. Fair enough. <laughs> Well, it's got stink wrap on it right now still. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the cute little Amazon card uh, basically says, a gift for you, season's greetings from all of us at Plaid. So I've got a pick and nicket basket. No, it's not, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a wicker basket. You're doing an unboxing. I'm doing an unboxing. <laughs> fan mail. Uh, Plaid Effects is a fan. Plaid Effects is a fan. I am a fan of Plaid Effects, this works. So we got that. All right, do I actually have to untie it? Oh, weird, it's stretchy. No, I don't have to untie it. I've never seen a Lycra bow before. Really? It's not Lycra, but... This would make a really good hair tie. Yeah, it probably would, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, what do we got? We've got, oh, <laughs> it's food. <laughs> snacks. Snacks. This is quite a bit of snacks. Wow. Chocolate Santa. It's not all fill or fluff. It's actually like no, solid it's, it's snacks. No, it's actually packed snacks. There's only a little bit of Excelsior in here. This is, yeah, packed to the bottom, full of the French truffles. Wow, this is kind of cool. All right. Yay for snacks. Thank you, Plaid. Ooh, cookies. Cookies? Sorry. No, that's fine. Yeah, it's cookies, Ghirardelli squares, uh, peppermint chocolate pretzels. Shortbread. New Vola. It's a coated cake with milky cream filling. Okay. This is pretty cool. Well, thank you guys. Thank you very much, Platt. Um, not that I expect stuff like this all the time, but I do have a P.O. box. So if anybody watching is, is interested in, in uh, sending in fan mail, that is actually possible. And... Uh, Pretty much willing to open it up on screen. I will take a moment to make sure that it isn't something that's completely inappropriate and I wouldn't want to show anyone. So, you know, there's that. But we want to, if we want to play that game, let me double check that I've got the right number. Uh, Have it written down this time? I wish. <laughs> ah, good. I do, I, did, I do have it right. So, if you want to send fan mail uh, and, and have us undo it, on screen, and this can be addressed to me, and I'm pretty sure Felicia wouldn't mind if it's if she directly gets fan mail sent to my P.O. Box. Uh, it's P.O. Box 874 in Orangevale, California. That's all one one, Orange, V-A-L-E, uh, and the zip code is 95662. So um, that's my P.O. Box, and yeah, I'd be happy to open up fan mail during a live stream. I think that might be fun. Now it is watching paint dry. Now it is watching paint dry. But I have more show and tell. You have more? From a guy who actually makes show and tell videos. More show and tell. More show and tell. 
Oh, yeah. I bought some of Adam Savage's and Tested's demerit badges. I don't know if you've seen these at the end of his videos. I know you can't see them right now. Uh, hit, hit up three. Like three, probably, yeah. No, nope, that's out of focus. Let's do two. But what I have are, uh, these are just like merit badges that you would have for um, Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts, but they're different things that you do wrong as a maker, right? So you get a demerit because you've earned a badge for making a mistake. This particular one is, you see at the top, you measure once and cut twice. So that's your measure once and cut twice. I definitely have earned this badge. And the second badge that, that, that they've come up with is the uh, electronics badge. This is the one where you solder something wrong and you uh, cross the wires and it burns up and you let out the mysterious blue smoke, uh, the, the, the smoke that actually makes the electronics work. So this is the demerit badge for making a soldering or electronics mistake. And yeah, I've definitely earned this badge as well. And then the third one was more of a joke on Adam from his viewers, but this was for, uh, you know, getting your finger caught in a lathe and, and almost tearing it off. Of course, the, the, the image is fun because it's always the fun, you know, hey, look at my boo-boo. I have not earned this badge. I do not wish to earn this badge for tearing my, almost tearing my finger off on a lathe. I, I actually have one. I could give that a shot. I don't want to do it. I have injured myself, so that might be okay. But um, yeah, this is kind of fun. I liked it a lot. So actually, I had to buy him myself. He's got, I'm plugging tested right now, but I watch him all the time, so whatever. Um, it's okay to be a fan. Yeah, so it was cool. And, and I, got a, I also got a big sticker for the uh, measure once, cut twice, because yeah, I can totally, totally jive with that one. Oh, it'll fit! Damn it. So, I don't know. Fun. I thought it was cool. I, don't, I like those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't have anything really to sew them onto, but that'll happen. Something will come up. A little Boy Scout. A little Boy Scout sash. I don't sash think I want to wear one of those necessarily. <laughs> um, I, I, I. Jacket? All I got is like a dumpy hoodie. But yeah, something. It'll come something. up. Something. I'll come up with something. Something. See what people are saying. And thus ends today's show and tell. Just a question. Can you use the templates and scale them down to make something like one one hundredth scale prop? Well, I'm sure you can. Yeah. Um, whatever templates that we've got, um, or any template you, that you do, you just print them out at the scale that you want them. So yeah, if you want to print something out at 1% size, it would be one one hundredth of the size that, that you want. Um, so you can I, make a little suit for ants? Make a little suit for ants, yeah. <laughs> what is this, cosplay for ants? Uh, hey, let's plug it in the channel. My friend Steve at SKS Props, you know, the guy that actually makes HD foam, he just did a, uh, a video with um, making the child's uh, floating pram for the Mandalorian, right? Oh, okay. But he made like a chibi, like a cute version, so it would fit the Mattel toy, because the Mattel toy isn't right proportional, right? It's a toy proportion. Oh, okay. To be cutesy. So updated it? Yeah. Fixed it? Fixed it. Just just cute, cute eyes it. Well, to get the pattern for the pram, because it's basically an egg, he took a plastic Easter egg egg. That's mm -hmm. the size of a hen egg. And he covered that with tape and drew his pattern on it and scanned it to the computer and he increased it to be the size that he wanted, which yeah. totally works. I definitely have to work on my computer pattern drafting skills. Right. I have them for the wrong programs that are no longer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, totally. So, you know, just yeah. guess I, I took an Auto, AutoCAD cor uh, course in college yeah, in 88. <laughs> I could, I don't know if I could open AutoCAD right now. <laughs> yes. But that's one thing I would like to do is just as soon as the patterns are done, be able to transfer them a little easier. That'd be nice. Yeah. So what else people are saying while we're waiting for this paint to dry? Wait this is so riveting, isn't it? Hey, for those of you who want, really, really want to relive the excitement of watching paint dry, uh, just two years ago for my April Fool's video, I put out Odin Makes Watching Paint Dry. Um, and that's literally what the like 13 minute video is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's there. It's, it's live. Tens of thousands of people have watched me watch paint dry. And, and now you're joining that club, so thank you. Only you're, you're the special group because you're watching it live. Right? Although we're not really watching the paint dry. I literally I just am. stood there and watched it dry. I didn't okay. do anything else. <laughs> I don't know if I have that kind of patience. Yeah, it was all for the joke. It's worth it for the joke. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Hey, Odin okay. and Felicia, what color lightsaber would you pick? Green. You pick green? Mm -hmm. They're asking me as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, I made blue. 
Did you pick blue or did you? Uh, blue is picked for me, but having made blue, red, I don't think I've done green. What piece fell off? Yeah. Okay. I thought I hit something. Um, blue is brighter. And um, uh, the, the red is really impressive, but it takes a lot of battery power to make the red really glow for video. And it, 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 there's a lot of after effects done to make them look as bright as they are. Uh, whereas the blue, you can see, reacts fairly well in camera. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd be okay with blue. This actually is, uh, there's a video for this for Beyond Geek. Um, this is one of the ones I made for Beyond Geek. The soundboard is just one of the Hasbro Blade Builder soundboard with an updated speaker. And then it's got a little relay inside for a much, much brighter LED. I broke it. You did. That's, that's <laughs> How impressive. How did I break it? It's got a short. It. That was cool. <laughs> All right, I'm not touching anything else. I'll that's break okay. it again. <laughs> <laughs> it lived. Right? But well, yeah, there's this, a there's, it's the, the end cap, yeah. Yeah. Pommel, whatever. Pommel, I called it the wrong thing. It's fine. Hilt, it's the same thing. I'm being, I'm being more specific. You've actually said the right enough thing. I broke well, it in. <laughs> it's got a short in the battery. That's fine. You know, I've made it. Demerit badge. <laughs> we could press out the hair dryer and, and speed these up, but you know what you'd hear? Hair dryer. <laughs> I suppose we could cut out the brown vinyl for the rest of sure. the, the side front, side, and side back scene. And then we could, yeah, because I got the brown for that. That's still wet. I just wish yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can see it's wet from here. I can see the, the wet. <laughs> I know we had that other brown, but we didn't have quite enough of it, and it right. wasn't quite matchy enough, so I just got new stuff. Okay, well, that's fine. I remember the other brown was really cool because it had like a really, really neat texture. It did, and that's why I couldn't replicate it. Right. So I it's, just... It's probably hard to get that vinyl anymore. Yeah, it's old from the 80s. This oh, this is, is really cool. Yeah. I had three choices of brown. This was <laughs> the one I picked. That's all good. I'm just... Instead of having the, the, the really thick, this is a very thin vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, it's like canvas backed or something? Yeah, it's or, a more modern vinyl. It's a more modern vinyl? Yeah, it's a more of a modern vinyl where it's just a thin little seam film. Yeah. That they put over a nice heavy canvas backing. So. Right. Oh, well, that's really cool. It matches. It's, that's the biggest part. Yeah. So I'm not finding this pattern piece, but since we have them cut out of foam, um, I think we're yeah. fine. Am I, am I running off looking for pattern pieces again? Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay. I have them cut out of foam and I didn't cut off the seam allowance on the foam like I should have. Oh, okay. And I need the seam allowance on the... So I kept trying to move those around and keep them together. Maybe yeah. It's, maybe it's with the, the chain mail, wherever that is. Because that works just like a little sponge, you know, oh, totally. pad. Double check Discord. See what people are saying. If they're saying, we're talking about the, the gun he wants to do is actually uh, Rex's blaster. <clears throat> but uh, that's fun. Green on this. <laughs> well, the keto and, 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 and Nicole are sharing the picture. So Keto's working on a set of foam Ahsoka blades, and um, which I wonder if that's patterned after the SKS props ones, because again, he just did Steve just did a video on those. <clears throat> Neat. This is totally off grade. <laughs> It's a totally off green. Look at oh. it. It's a. Um, wow. Oh, I see the cut. It's okay. It's about 
here. You make it on green. Yeah. Right. It's only about that off. About. <laughs> about. 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 It's not the end of the world, but it makes a big, it makes a difference. And again, don't cut stuff on a <laughs> table that's too small. Right. But there. You told me plenty of times having the fabric hang off the table just introduces problems because it moves while you're cutting and you get an inaccurate cut. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And it all shifts. But there we go. It's all nice right. and flat. So then we need four of these, so four of these, and one of these. Oh, okay. Because... I don't need any of these unless I line the backs of them and then I would need two. So we do it this way, I'll get you two and get you two, and then you can get two more and you can get two more. Uh -huh. Do we want to just mm -hmm. cut it there and then cut it in half? Yep. Okay. Pretty much. Make it a little easier on us. Yeah. There's some water rulers on the other on the other wall behind the wall. Uh, Which oh, one do you want? Never mind. Scissors is fine. I don't oh think yeah, about do scissors. you use I'm 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 straight edge guy, yeah. Yeah. I Constantly. just straight scissors. That's fine. <laughs> I always forget about that because I never get to use them at my... And you would cut those out using... I would cut these out using my... Um, I planned on cutting out using the, the razor knife, yeah. Okay, then yeah, you probably should, but <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, don't think like to. that. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just... That's not where my brain goes. It's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Because this one should be able to cut. I know I talked about that before, and then one of the fabrics didn't behave. And all shifted around to need the yeah. bricks. Where are the uh, bricks? They're, they're over here. Oh, on the other side. Not necessarily. I was just double checking. We're gonna be able to get. What we're gonna we have. Need. We're gonna have. Yeah, there's lots plenty. of slop. Do you care? No. Okay. No. We're good. This is a piece. This is an extra piece. Because the center front is the chain mail, and then we have the side front. Well, we have the side front, side seam, side seam, side back seam, and then the back thing. So we need four on each side quadrant, I guess you could say. Right. So, yeah. Okay, hi people. I will see what you guys are saying. <laughs> I haven't been looking. So here. Which... Uh, oh, there's two different styles, right? So yeah. I'll, I'll take the, the funky There's style. the taper one and there's the straight one. Okay, well, I'll take the taper one. You start with that one? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this one's just a straight up rectangle. It'll fit that way, would it? Yeah, it fits this way. That was the intent. I know there's yeah, extra. Yeah, no, I know. It's just... But it could have if I had planned differently. No, I know. It's just wrapping presents, you know? Right. <laughs> oh, dang it. I could have wrapped it that way, but then... Wonder Woman would be facing the wrong way on the wrapping paper, and that makes a difference. That makes a difference. Right? You don't want to piss off Wonder Woman. Oh, I... That almost sounds like a bad joke, and it's not. It's just... Okay. Okay. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Once it gets out into space, it's not... Cutting the fibers, but against the cutting mat, it's cutting. Okay. Sorry, am I in your way? No, you're okay. Hey, there's that. I could turn it over and work on the back side. That's a great idea. Yeah, no one ever sees the back side. You could totally, like, label them, write on them. <laughs> no, this is a straight line. I just line up a straight line. And I just changed the phone. Did you? Yeah, I cut the phone a little bit. You're fine. That's I have what, to cut off the seam allowance anyways. Oh, okay. That's why I'm always cutting with a metal straight edge. Like I was telling you, I don't like plastic rulers. Yeah. Or wooden rulers, because I'm always whittling the ruler. Yes. And then my brain's like, it's not straight anymore. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Dang brain. Nabbit, this is slightly... Look at that. What? Oh, just the grain line. I started straight here, and then it's just slightly off by the time I got Oh, here. I see. I Is you gonna have enough? Oh, you got seam allowance, so you don't care about the solvage, right? Yeah, it's on the solid part of it, so it'll be fine. It'll just, but. Okay. I just, I got the 
the little teeth from moving it. I saw that in the front. It's still there, isn't it? You got these little, these little puckers where hairs used to be. <laughs> yeah, that's within the half an inch. Okay. So this one would be on the back. I know I could just cut out a nicer one. Not worried. I. I just grabbed the material and started hacking at it because I don't. I'm not respecting the what the could grain? be left over. Oh, yeah, no, don't worry about it. And I don't even think about grain because I work with foam, which has no grain. Lucky. <laughs> it's a whole different Where skill are the set. Other red scissors, the the the, the smaller ones. The smaller ones. These? No. These ones. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Knew there was another pair. I don't know. <laughs> so here's the left and the right. I assume that's partly what you want, right? Yeah. Well, okay. there's no um, nap to the fabric, so... You can spin it, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I did it that way anyway, and I'm going to do it that way again, because I've just got the... It's folded over. It's going to be, you know, easy for my little brain to do it. Odin and Felicia, nice shirt and sweater. Also, Odin, have you ever thought about making God Killer Sword from the Wonder Woman movies or C-3PO headpiece from Star Wars? Thought about it. Yes. Um, I've got a 3D model for a C-3PO head, which uh, I have, have, have had interest in printing, and that is definitely something I think I just want to print. Um, really like C-3PO and, and don't think I could get the proportions uh, of his head correct out of foam. Just just my own level of foam sculpting. But um, got the 3D models, which that would be really cool to print out. God Sword, I've looked at it. Uh, obviously it hasn't happened, but I've looked at the God Sword and that's a pretty cool sword. Okay. Oh, apparently um, Henry Cheville's accident, he fell down from a height on his legs, and he's okay, but he can't wear any heavy armor at the moment. I was reading about that, that, yeah, he hurt himself. He needs foam. No. He needs foam armor. Um, yeah, that he, he got hurt, and production's on pause for the moment. I pause, hold for the moment, because he's hurt, but anyway. I did read that. Who's telling us that? Um, Norton Van Den Bolt. Okay, thank you, Norton. Yes. Batman fan says, you are my favorite person to watch on YouTube, Odin. Wow, thank you, Batman fan. Uh, making Batman videos with Smosh was one of my favorite characters to work with. Right? I love... At first, I was very disappointed in the Smosh Batman. I'm not going to lie when I read that script. Right. But making it, building it, and being on it, I enjoyed it. And I it grew on me. Yeah, in a, in a hurry. In a hurry, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really like Ian's version of, of right? Batman. It's great. I really do like Ian's Batman. Hey, Odin, do you know you have a smudge on your main camera? Do I? Is that what people are talking about? <laughs> Apparently, I guess. No, we did not. He did no, not. No, I did not. So I don't know if it's a smudge or... Uh... It could be a light reflection. That's why I was trying to have this thing up. Hopefully it doesn't fall in front of the lens. Does that help? <laughs> we'll see in a second because we'll they're like, yeah, second. that lens is not clean. <laughs> Well, it may not be so much that there's a smudge on the lens, which there could be. I try not to touch the lens, but... <laughs> yeah. Try. Um, I have a, a teleprompter set up on top of it. That's how I'm able to spit out all the Raid Shadow Legends stuff correctly. The sixth or seventh try still, anyway. Um, but it's on there all the time, just because I'm lazy, I don't want to take it off. The hood, just recently, uh, it's got a fabric hood that it goes over the, the two-way mirror. Um, the sticky let go, and it fell down in front of the lens. So I've been trying to trying to set it back up and stick it back on with different tape, and it just keeps falling off. And so I actually gave up on it and tossed it down earlier today. 
Uh, and so you might be seeing a reflection off the wrong side of the glass from the light that's just over there. Or you just have a dirty camera. Or I have a dirty camera. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I lost my knife, so I can't cut out foam pieces for my Iron Man helmet, which is the first foam project. Well, sorry. Sorry, you lost your knife? Hopefully that isn't some sort of like disciplinary act. You lose your knife privileges. That would suck. <sighs> Think of the children. Think of the children. How am I going to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich if I can't have a knife? I need to cut off the seam allowance now off of the foam pieces. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah, they, I just added a quarter inch all the way around. It's a quarter inch all the way around? Yeah, the entire there's, thing. Except there's another set. This one. Yeah. Which doesn't matter because they can spin like you said. But. Yeah. We have those okay. four, we have these four, and now the foam pieces just need to be trimmed down all around a quarter of an inch, because I didn't think of that. I was just patterning for the outside fabric, not the interfacing. That's okay. All right. He's just straight, right? Batman fan has to go now. Bye, oh. Odin. Bye, Bye Batman, Batman fan. make the Star Lord's blaster or Kylo Ren's helmet. Yep. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I should. You should. We have Jahadar Safari. Hi from Iran. Oh. Hi. Sweet. Hello. You can make an energy sword from the Halo games or Master Chief's helmet from the upcoming Hain Galo Infinite. Yep. Those are also good possibilities. Those are also very good possibilities. I know you never read these, but you do read no, these. No, I do read these, but I don't read those. No, that's Out loud, fine. yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's fine. My, my fear was if I started reading every uh, request out That's loud, all you would be That's doing. all I would get. Yeah, yeah. no, I know. So. That's okay. I'm seeing these. But I do ask them in my videos to send me requests, so that's exactly what they're doing. It's I asked for it, yeah. and I'm not upset because I do read through them, and I, the majority of the things I build come from that. The, yeah. the helmet this week is, no, I want to make that. But, uh, <laughs> That's one of your own passions. <laughs> that was my, one of my own so little passions. So this week's yeah. video brought to you by Odin. Brought to you by Odin. Yes. Here's a prop I wanted to make. <laughs> yeah. Thor's helmet was the same way. First time I saw Thor Ragnarok trailer on uh, in the movie theaters. I'm making that. <laughs> yeah. We got a hi from Germany and missed the start. Well, well hi oh. now. Hello, Germany. You are still here. Um, make that monkey that fixes Kylo Ren's helmet. <laughs> make that monkey that fixes Kylo Ren's helmet? Hello. Maybe Star Citizen armor? Maybe. Hello, Odin and Felicia. How are you both? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm a, I'm a little loopy. Sleep deprived? A little sleep deprived. Uh, I'm a little... Haven't eaten, so I'm a little little funky there too. It is lunchtime. It is for us. For us, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, realizing this whole entire world of audience people. <laughs> it is well, no way. My, my whole entire world's California right now, so whatever. But yeah. 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 <laughs> so, question for you. Because the shape will actually change, is it important to cut a quarter inch off of this, or take another quarter inch off of that? Quarter inch off of this. Okay. I, I, I added it to the entire piece. Okay. See? That one I actually had. I okay. added it there and to there. So. But good question. Just. I you. like your hack. Thank you. Well, that was a quarter. I, I, I did my best to uh, make sure. No, I know. Like, when you found out that if you hold uh, um, pe two pencils together, it's a half an inch. So you can draw on your seam allowance by just holding two pencils Really? Um, yeah. Rubber band together. Really? No, I didn't know. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes when I'm being lazy and I don't want to measure, I will just rubber band two pencils and I'll just trace my whole pattern and it will give me... Your half inch seam allowance. Yeah. All right. <laughs> which lines, which I don't, I never actually took the time to measure measure, but it lines up with my sewing machine with the edge of the foot. That's so. great. That was a way, well, your sewing machine as well. Um, yeah. Because uh, that was one centimeter for me. Yeah. Uh, which is a little less than half an inch. Now I'm, you don't have two pencils, otherwise we can measure. I don't, I don't measure. have two pencils. Well, there's more down there. I just have to dig. They're all the way in the back corner. Oh, I see. Yeah. 
see. I see. I see. And then there's a sharpener in the box in the corner. There's another pencil right here. Oh, uh, I hid that box for myself. It's okay. By the way, we're both a little tired. <laughs> At least it's not like, oh, it's a Monday. I'm not living that. No, oh, I actually enjoy Mondays because I this is my day off, believe it or not. Right. <laughs> I do this for fun. And I appreciate you hanging out your, on your day off. Oh, so let me just do it. It's not your only day off, but still. That's centimeters. Oh, there, besides the inches. That's a quarter of an inch. Perfect, Lacey. Oh, quarter inch? Two pencils? Okay. Cool. Right? So. So a quarter inch, not half inch, but still. Inch, half, not half inch, yes, but two pencils. Yeah, that's that's seven millimeter. That's cool. <laughs> Just curious, you know. There's there's there are more uh, cultures that use uh, metric than use this. <laughs> that is okay. It lines up with my sewing machine. It does, and that's, totally. I just base it off of the pencil, so, you know, the yeah. width of the Pharaoh's pencil. <laughs> right. I wasn't trying to correct you. I was just no, like, I why? Trying to give you a reason for why I wanted to double check metric. Yes. So I was really happy. Something I've wondered about, because I will talk about, oh, this is a two mil thickness. This is a six mil thickness. Finally, on some other channels, I've seen people refer to it the same way, so I feel like I'm not saying the wrong thing by shortening millimeter to mil, you know, because... Um, not with, sure if with, it's all correct with... <laughs> right, with terminology, because you can say it's this thou, you know, thousands thou, right? Because it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's two decimal points past the... So I'm sure millionths of an inch is, is also inappropriate, because I didn't know if I was saying it was two millionths of an inch. <laughs> where you actually run into your biggest issues on your conversions. <laughs> With the tiniest measurements? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. You just me misread something. That's okay. You know how it worked? I, I'm always complaining about how it's 50 shades of white. Like yes. It's just everything's the same shade. Well, right. we have two colors that are actual colors, nude and natural. Okay. And, oh my gosh, those were mislabeled. And they've been mislabeled for a month now. Nude is labeled as natural. <laughs> right. And, and they're, they're different shades. They're different because, colors. Because, like, yeah. this, is, this is nude, right? Yeah, that's the nude. And the natural is more of a, um unstained cotton. So it's just like a... Oh, okay. Natural because it's a... Right. Natural cotton. Yes. I so gotcha. this is nude and that's natural. They're okay. mislabeled. And I always just double check the, the labels to... Uh -huh. Because I don't trust my 50 shades of white sometimes because in the mornings... they. Well, especially in the mornings, if you've got big windows, you're getting morning light coming in. That's going to mess with all the whites. Yeah, but those are the ones that are just the same, the basic color. Apparently, it's been like that for a couple months, and we just figured this out now after two dresses have had the wrong linings. But did they complain? No, no, we caught it. We figured oh, it you out. Caught it. But you know, that's still not cool. Yeah. But you know what I mean. You just realize that you make those silly, stupid. Uh huh. And it's always on the littlest things. It's the, 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 you take yeah. two seconds looking on a sheet of paper and it's like, oh, I'm good. And you move on. Uh huh. It's the smallest measurements. It's the littlest things. It's the nude and natural. They're both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you, how do you work that into artwork? You're, you're, you're a molehill into a mountain demerit badge. <laughs> the wrong shade of white and it's just a white badge. <laughs> well, I was just thinking the no. smallest things can make, make their biggest problems. True. That's, that's all I was thinking. Well, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I would do some kind of angle because it starts out like it's not that big of a deal, but the more you progress, okay, kind of the lesser the more deviated from the original path you ought to be in. But I don't know how that would translate. Okay. Okay. Hi, Odin and Felicia. What about making Ultraman's helmet? Eventually, right? <laughs> On the list. Right. Um, I enjoy Ultraman. I remember this almost ties in. Um, there's plenty of times I've seen a lot of the Ultraman movies, but I saw them as a serial put together uh, in the California Bay Area, right? In San Francisco and the East Bay Area. I grew, grew up in, on the East Bay. Um, watched a lot of the Ultraman movies. And I wouldn't be opposed to making the Ultraman helmet. 
Um, or, or, or I don't know if I went to the whole suit. It's kind of an interesting, like, it's not a spandex suit. It's 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 lycra, you know, neoprene ish. It's interesting. I'd have to see it. Yeah, it's, I can't. It's, it's it. 70s. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but there was a particular television show that would run the movies all week long as as a serial. They just break these movies up. It was their science fiction thing, and um, yeah, that was um, Captain Cosmic. I gotta try try, try to read my shirt again. There was a show in the area, Captain Cosmic, and, and 2D2, because it was on Channel 2. And um, weird shirt to get, because this was a show that I watched as a kid. They ran Godzilla movies. They ran Ultraman movies. They would, on occasion, run anime uh, movies. It was all science fiction. It was a lot of monsters. And it was a lot of, of Japanese stuff. And so, yeah, I remember seeing a lot of Ultraman on, on this show. With, with him as your little host that would pop up at the beginning and talk back and forth. And, you know, Star Wars was just recently popular, so they made this big boxy robot prop that had motors in it so his arms would move up and down like a like an oversized tin toy robot, right? And they'd always make a point on, on different episodes to turn the robot sideways so you could see it wasn't a person in this in a suit. And the robot would basically just kind of do this <laughs> and maybe turn his head and the mouth would flash to show that, that two, two, two B2, 2T2, two 2T2 two two, two two was talking. Okay. Anyway, fun stuff. I, I don't think there's this is anywhere on YouTube. I never I, heard of it until I, you told me today. So I'm, I'm sure because Sacramento, you wouldn't get Channel Two up here. It's a very, very specific niche thing. Very. Um, I uh, yeah, uh, was, that's why I was so wow when I saw the T-shirt at a con. I have to have that. Um, that's very yeah. obscure superhero, and I yes. love obscure <laughs> superheroes. The more obscure, the kind of the better. Now I'm trying to remember. It was because uh, it wasn't Captain Mitch. That was a Sacramento guy. He did he did other channels as well, but the guy who did Creature Features. I'm trying to remember his name again. This is you know same time frame. The same guy who did this as a children's show for for science fiction at five o'clock. I think it was or four thirty. Um, would do Creature Features, which was classic horror movies at night and he had the big uh plush chair and he would smoke a cigar and and talk about the the movie i want that guy's job yeah exactly <laughs> no it's great because he had all this great knowledge of, about stuff and now i can't remember his name that's horrible but it was the same guy he just with this costume wore a 70s motorcycle helmet with with like a half visor to, to hide his identity it was just a motorcycle helmet i'm like seven that's a motorcycle helmet <laughs> Superman wore glasses. This is true. So, you know. So it's okay if I can't remember his name, <laughs> the actual actor's name? You'll be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Man, I wish I could. Hi, Odin and Felicia. What's one project that you want to make the most? You know, what I've been kind of wanting to make. What, what have you been kind of wanting to make? Cinderella's skirt, but I want to, like, laced with LEDs. Oh. So that, you know how you can program LEDs on a Christmas tree to really, yeah. you know, change and sparkle and yeah. drop? Yeah. Do, I wanted, do rain. So you want to do a matrix effect on a, on a Cinderella dress? Pretty much. <laughs> I want to make it sparkle with actual LED lights. I want to okay. do a full on, like, I want to lace a, that's one of those projects that I have been thinking about that I want to do and I have no reason to do, but doesn't mean I won't do it. That's a really cool idea. I'm, I am not opposed to this idea. I yeah. like this. So that's... You're really, there's too much bulk to actually make like a quick change out of it where you can you go from the from one to the other. and have the effects happen as you turn around and it switches. It's honestly not impossible. Oh, okay. It really isn't. Um, but... I. <laughs> Let's get the LEDs to work first. <laughs> no, no, I've seen those ones where they have them all done up and then they spin and they come out and then it's the transforming right. dress. Of course, that's also big reveal. And right. Especially if you can do it with the LED lights even more so. Yeah. But that's a great idea. Yeah, but that's one of those projects that I have in the back of my head that I've been wanting to do because I just want to play with LEDs and tool. Okay. Yeah, because I saw a lot of this some sculptures that they had done out of tool. Right. With, not tools, but tool is the is the thin, um, lacy, like bridal veils. Bridal veils. Yeah, tool. I was gonna say bridal veil. But I was catching myself. Is that actually a tool? Yes, that's yeah. a tool. And it's T U L L E. Something like that. Is, is, it's is spelled T U L E or T U L L E is how tool is spelled. There's two L's. It's not a T O O L. Yeah, so that's one of those projects that I've been wanting to work on in the back of my head. So I've been building it. 
Okay, that's cool. Yeah. The one that I've been working on in the back of my head for the longest time, I just started. That's Mechagodzilla. Yeah, you have yeah. been talking about that one for a while. For a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. So that's actually happening. I got the head done. Yay. Okay. Make sure I keep I hiding the mouse for myself. Okay. So how will the garter pieces be attached together? Okay. Magic. So I plan on sewing the garter pieces, the girdle pieces. I plan on sewing the um, vinyl itself together on, but I plan on gluing now that these have been trimmed down, the seam allowance, uh -huh. them inside of the vinyl. Okay, there we are. Make and sure I don't double cut the same one. No, I know. <laughs> Make sure they're all a quarter so, inch smaller. So they're all, this one's totally quarter inch smaller. These are quarter inch smaller on the three straight sides. So now I do this one, and then I'll do the hourglass on all of them. Anyway, continue, please. No worries. I actually lost where I was. My you were talking off. about um, how are they all going to be attached, and that oh, these yeah. are going to be glued inside, and then you were trying to elaborate on that, I think. Yeah, um, and then I was thinking of just doing a, a lining and just folding it in and <laughs> hammering it down. We'll get oh. there. Oh, Wait. so you're going to sew all this to, like, a natural lining? Don't I... use nude. <laughs> no, I, I was considering whether I needed a an actual lining or not, which I really technically don't, but okay. it would give it a good finished edge. So in my head, I'm debating one I... way or another, but I wanted to get the chain mail sewn first okay. in the front garter because that, the way it's attached on the side right. is the part that, that's tripping me up the most because it's a digital image and it just stops right there. So it right. really looks like it's just was sewed in and folded out and that there's no <laughs> going from chain mail to the... Right. Does that make any weird sense? It does. It's just the, 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 the way... Because it's just a, it's a bitmap. It's not actually a costume. Yeah, they... how it would practically work versus the way it really would work versus the way I would probably do it in real life are all different things. Right. Although they, they try really hard. They make it look like... No, and they did a great job. It's just right there at the front, like where they do that. I, but I'm just, I think that's just going to end up being sewn. Okay. But we'll, once we get to that part, then we'll decide whether it's going to be needed to be lined or not. And I think that's where I'm going to, when I tackle that issue, find out. Cool. I know, live stream, you guys get to see me figure out what I'm actually doing as we're doing it. I, I try to keep that in my videos. <laughs> Me trying to figure out what I'm doing or how to back out of where I got myself. <laughs> yep. The whoopsie daisy. Yeah. Oh, this isn't what I wanted. Okay. So I'm not going to cut them all at the same time because that will not work. No. That will that will error because the, night, the, the blade will pitch and the bottom one will either be not cut all the way through or it will be cut um, wider or smaller because... The blade will change while I'm trying to do it. That's okay. I trust you. Oh, thank you. Uh, the Metal Reaper aluminum tape is an excellent choice. Tested has made a few videos on the use of making swords with it. Oh, okay, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I like that That must tape. be uh, must be answering someone else's question. Yes, yeah, totally the, is. Yeah. But I love that tape. I use it all the time when we need to do fake metal. Yeah. Or when we need to do like metal doors or metal around anything. I love that stuff. It's I just use that for the most boring, mundane, and what it's intended for purpose. What I was helping Joe with with his sound booth was we cut into the AC uh, of his house to pipe in an extra piece that goes into the booth. Because the booth's in his garage and it's going to be hot in the summer. Yeah. So I've got the aluminum tape to tape the ductwork to the ductwork to make the So <laughs> make you're the using tea. it for its intended purpose? I'm using it for its intended purpose. Well, are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, do I have to leave the show now? Come back next week for Felicia Makes. <laughs> okay. Cosplay is Cosplay Apprentice WTF a good foam? Yes. Yes. Yes, this is Cosplay Apprentice w WTF foam. I absolutely love this stuff. This stuff is as a Dense as an eraser, I would say. Yes, it is dense as a pencil eraser. When you grind it with a, with a Dremel or other rotary tool, it has the scent of rubber. Uh, so I think it's got a, a bit of like rubber to it. Um, it is billed as being if uh, EVA foam and Warblood had a child, this is what it would be. And they're not wrong. I mean, 
yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can break it, but it stretched quite a bit, and this is a thin piece. And with that stretch, you also can mold. With that, shape yes, you can mold shape. You can you can you can vacuum form with a lot of a lot of foams. This will totally do it and hold it really well. HD foam you can vacuum form with. Because we well. all have vacuum forms. Well, okay, fair <laughs> enough. I don't actually have a working one right now, but um, no, fair enough. That that's a funny thing to say, but I thought that was neat. Yeah. Um, this is just the two mil as a quarter inch piece. If you start using it an inch wide or an inch and a half wide, it's actually a functional strap. Yeah. You can actually I was sew with it and completely and, impressed with the clamshell that it yeah. that thing is going to handle wear and tear. Yes. So, <laughs> so yes, it, it, it is. It's a good foam. It is a very good foam. Um Yeah. And I really now there's a there's a trade off. It is a really good foam, uh, but it has a higher price point than say what the foam? Uh, uh, HD foam. Uh, HD foam is uh, you can buy it from Blake and you can get it, I think, directly from SKS Props. Uh, but that's a very high density, that's a great foam I'm typically using. Yeah. Um, I really like that foam, but it's much softer than what the foam. They do different, they have different... Different properties. <laughs> yes, they yeah. very much do, okay. Uh, and, and the fact that what the foam is all that neutral, light gray color. I actually like the uh, what the foam comes in different colors, which is great as as an instructor because you know if you see red what the foam oh that's two millimeters period it's always two millimeters um, the four millimeter is black and the six millimeter which is the inside of the clamshell is a really dark gray and they only come in those colors so you know by color what your size is uh, HD foam is all the same neutral light gray so that's a problem if you're trying to identify by color how thick it is but you can use a pencil to make all of your marks on it uh, and pencil doesn't come through uh, uh, spray paint and, and, and Placid Depth quite the same as like say Sharpie does. Yeah. And so that I like that aspect a lot and that comes from using floor mat foam or <laughs> the uh, some of the from first experience. This is experience. Trial, error, error. mostly error. <laughs> You can get uh, black EVA foam. And black EVA foam is great because if it tears or does something stupid, it's still black. But you can't mark it with a pencil and see it easily. You can mark it with a pencil, but you got to catch the light right to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So White pencils. Yeah. So, um, or, yeah. Or, or, or the silver pens. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Even with fabric, they're like, oh, use fabric chalk. I'm like, I never have the right color for whatever color I'm right. with. <laughs> okay. Uh, holy crap, I made it back before the end of the show. Nice. Well, sweet. You did Welcome it, Waynard. Back. Who is it? Waynard. Waynard. Wait, oh, wait. Oh, hey, Adam. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, everyone in the live chat, say hi to Waynard. He is one of the few unfortunate people that had to live with me for a while. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I, I, I knew Waynard through uh, through play, and, and he, yeah, poor guy lived with me for a while. <laughs> Another friend here in Sacramento. Cantuna is asking, have you ever had a really annoying experience with a toxic fan or a hater? Fans used to go by and honk at the Smosh house and that was annoying. That was annoying, yeah. We're <laughs> recording. Um, no. No trolls I'm pretty, in the comments? I'm pretty lucky as far as toxic fans go. I mean, enthusiastic. But, um... Because there's... Being a little older, if I'm going to message somebody, I try to put a whole thought in the message and fire the message off. I've had a few fans that want to talk to me through different message apps, which is cool. Like, I'm happy to talk to people. But when it's like, hey, send, how are, send, you doing, send, question mark, send. So I'm at work and my phone's buzzing off the table because I'm getting six or eight texts for one thought. That I find annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no one person that did that. There's it's been a, it's been a couple. Okay. Uh, but that's that's about it. Otherwise, I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> I would think. Cool. Um, hey, should I make the Mandalorian gun using a Nerf gun? And now that's a challenge. Absolutely. I don't I don't know which Mandalorian gun you're looking at, but it doesn't matter. Nerf gun is a great way to start. And yes, I think you probably should. It's a, it's the base of a gun. It's the exactly. It's the base of a gun. It doesn't matter. It has a which, trigger. Which blaster you want to go with? It's it's easy to build off of. And yeah, totally. Um, and it has it can support the weight. It can support the weight. <laughs> can I reach it from here? 
Can't, which would I'll, I'll stick my head in front of the screen because I'm a professional. And <laughs> got a high, high, high. Oh, wow. It's got stuff on it, so it's extra heavy. Can you paint aluminum planters? Can you paint aluminum plumber's tape with transparent metallic paint? Um, I have, but it was never for anything that needed to last more than just like a couple of shots. A couple of shots, yes. yeah. So I don't know if permanently you can. Right. I don't know. It, it'll stick. But it's also flexible, so it will crack and peel. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Tell me how it works. Not quite a Nerf gun, but it was a toy gun, and I got it because it had the electronic trigger actually. But being talk about making the Mandalorian gun from a Nerf gun, there's a Another gun I made a couple years ago on my channel now it was just inspired by the type of guns that uh, uh, Rocket Raccoon makes for Guardians of the Galaxy. So this was my made up, one of the few props that's out of my channel that I just did, <laughs> you know, out of my head. So, yeah. Hey, it matches the helmet you just made up, too. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. It's over there. It's kind of the same blue in the back, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, this was, this was the transparent blue uh, metallic paint that I put on the um, Captain America shield. Okay. But, yeah, no. I need to do more with that helmet. Okay. Well, Mary lives in Sacramento. Hi, Mary. Hello, Mary. Um, Vasper36, <laughs> what do you do for a job? Well, you do this. I don't know what Vasper36 does for a job. <laughs> I like that. I do this. Uh, yeah, for um, I just talked about you know my phone rattling off the table at a job. At this point, this is my job. This is all I do. YouTube is full time for me. Um, that's that's how I pay my bills. Uh, what I was doing, I worked for the local PBS station KVIE. I was uh, I was a video editor for them, and so in a video edit uh, environment where you're working in a quieter space, to suddenly have your phone vibrate. Continuously, it was, it was noticeable. That's why I was I, I felt you know overly conscious about it. Uh, but no, I was I was at KVIE for almost five years, and um, managed to earn slash win myself four Emmys, uh, de being an editor for KVIE. So yeah. Yay! Yay! Um. I remember Ryan playing away. So Ryan was the director at Smosh, right? He was the guy yeah. in charge at, at Smosh. And after I won my first Emmy and posted it on social media, uh, Ryan would walk around correcting people. They say, "Didn't Odin say?" And so Ryan said, "Don't you mean Emmy award-winning Odin?" <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> uh, we got a hello from space. From space. Well, technically, it all goes to space before it gets here, so... Oh, well, technically, we're all in space. Um, we're just all on Spaceship Earth. Um, well, hello! Back to space. And we got a hey from New Zealand. Right on. Hello, New Zealand. And then somebody asked, but you had answered this earlier, are oh. you going to do anything cyberpunk-related? Ah, right. Well, they may not have been here when I went on that little rant. Yeah, like I said. Um, you... Probably. I need to find the right prop that I can make and won't be demonetized. So, because there's a lot of really awesome guns. YouTube doesn't like guns. You, you take a major gamble doing a gun prop that uh, the, the video will get restricted monetized or demonetized because heaven forbid it's a gun. Yeah, so if any of you guys have an idea, just put it in the comments below. Yep. I'll read it. I'll read it. I was looking at mantis blades, but chickened out, so. Yeah, because you can't chop off your arms. No, I don't want to chop off my arms. I mean, it's doable, but it's just, yeah, I don't know. Mary from Sacramento. She's watched you for three years. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Mary. Uh, we That's got, great. So we've got at least three current viewers that are from Sacramento. Neat. Nice. <laughs> That's really cool. That I know of, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them's my mom. No. <laughs> oh, one of them's your mom. Yeah, John's out front. Hey, John. I'm sure he's watching, too. But I love this. These are square, right? I'm being very careful to take a quarter inch off of each side. But these are square, right? Okay. So you could literally I could just, just do take a half, half an inch, inch on two sides. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's Monday. It's Monday. 
I'm talking. Yep. I'm on autopilot. Hi, Odin and Felicia saying hello from Florida. Have you ever oh. thought of not doing the great salmon helmet from Dragon... The great Saiyan helmet from Dragon Ball Z? The great Saiyan helmet? Saiyan, Saiyan. It's Saiyan. You're saying it right. I didn't when I made the, the scouter. And, and oh my gosh, I still get comments about how I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> Saying it wrong. I'm saying it wrong. Um, the great Saiyan helmet. I don't remember how that looks. I can remember there's a turban. But that's not the great Saiyan helmet. The great Saiyan helmet looks a lot like uh, the comic book version of Cerebro, right? Um, not against it. I need to do another Dragon Ball Z because the, the two videos I've got do really well. Dragon, Dragon Ball Z has got a huge... It's very classic and amazing, and they just had a video game that came out that's awesome. It's like playing through the TV show, but yeah. So. What she said. <laughs> so yeah, you probably should eventually. Plus, it's a helmet. Yeah. Hi from Mexicom, Americanus. Mexicom. They spelled Mex Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Okay. Americanus. We got Odin. Good afternoon from New York City. Oh. Hello, New York City. And Mary's on her mom's account. Oh, okay. Well. Does mom know that? No. So Mary is probably not Mary. Mm. But they're in Sacramento. But they're in Sacramento. Odin, are you ever going to make Iron Man helmet? <laughs> <laughs> ever is a mighty strong word. Yeah, I plan on making Iron Man helmet. Eventually. I've talked about how uh, I chickened out on it because I was too afraid of making derpy Iron Man. Well, succeed, succeeded with War Machine, so I'm not so afraid of that anymore. Yeah, you but. have the experience under your belt. You're ready to go? Yeah. Okay, works for me. Um, if you cut off both your arms, you can earn the Oops-a-Daisy badge. Uh, yeah, I suppose I could. Not a badge I want. I'm kind of attached to my arms. Hi, Odin and Felicia from Manchester. Hester again, would you consider making another lightsaber, but with an, I don't know, individually <laughs> addressable LEDs? Oh, gotcha. Sort of like what you want to do with uh, the Cinderella dress. Individually yeah. addressable LEDs, that's where um, you can tell each LED to, to be... To do its own job. Its own job and its own color. That's a whole lot of soldery. But I want well, to do it for the is. dress, but... Uh, yeah. It is. You can get strips of it. Uh, yeah. And you can get you can get strips of it where there's literally 144 LEDs per meter. You're right. So they are right next I've to each other. i fries. Yeah. I've gone through that section a few times thinking okay. about that dress. Sorry. Oh, there you go. No, that's great. Um, so... It's possible. It's but possible. You... But do you need, if you did individually addressable uh, LEDs, and you can do like rainbow effects and stuff going down the blade, you know, really wild stuff that isn't normal lightsaber. If you just got a, a, a buyer tricolor uh, LED, you could easily make a change between blue, green, and, and red. Okay. So you so don't need to be that fancy is you what don't you're have saying? To be that fancy. You still want them to be individually addressable, but uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be okay. it doesn't have to be the entire bag of Skittles. You only need three. Mm. <laughs> Nathan says you are my favorite YouTuber. Oh sweet. Thank you, Nathan. And Hacker Jacker wants to know how many pro props you have off camera. And the answer is I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Oh, a hundred. <laughs> uh, I've made fifty in the past year because I'm making one a week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have to count, and I don't think I've got enough fingers and toes right now. So, uh, there's there's 100, there's 120, something like that. There's a lot around. There's only a few that have, have wandered off. Um, talked about that before. It's now December, and no more have wandered off. But we're, we are working up to um, putting together probably like an eBay auction or something to allow some of the older props to go because I have run out of space. Uh, I can still build up the wall, and I will kind of want to do that. But I've got four helmets stacked on top of each other in a shelf over there. The Blades of Chaos is underneath some of the papers over there. I've got five props stacked in the wall behind the drill press. So I'm pay attention if you want, to want any of running this stuff. Out of, running out of space. I'm not saying that all that specifically is, is what would go, but yeah, definitely going to have to if you're interested, take a look, pay decide what I want to let go of, and, and let it go. Yeah. What you got... What got y'all into making pop culture stuff? Um, well, the fun of it 
it's recognizable as, as, as a costume and as cosplay. If you want to go out in public and have a thing, Shifting. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Um, <laughs> then if you're doing something from pop, uh, prop culture, from pop culture, uh, other people will recognize it and then that's fun, right? Because they're, they're in on what you're doing. Uh, as far as making props on YouTube, I specifically chose pop culture things because especially when I started it, it's still true today. People aren't like, oh, oh, what are Odin's making this week? No, it's how do I make a, and then you, what, what, the, what the item is. And that's the biggest reason for why I jump around and I don't just make Halo props or I don't just make Star Wars props. I, I, I want to do anime, I want to do video games, I want to do things from comic books because I want to do stuff that can grab new people who are outside of the, the people I'm already talking to, like you. Uh, and that's that's a, 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 a nice way to find people because they're, how do you make this random thing? And I've, I've made a random thing. Will you ever make a Wolverine mask? I've talked about it. Uh, actually, I talked about it to the people who, who made and gave me some strong back foam, which I need to order some more of that. Uh, some really nice adhesive foam. But I talked about doing the John Byrne style Wolverine mask because yeah. I like that mask. That is a good one. Um. And it's 2 o'clock, which means we are now slowly working on wrapping up the live stream. So, welcome to the continual after show. And yeah, holy smokes, it's 2 o'clock California time already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But hey, this is the last one. They should all be cut down. Yay. So, next week I'll bring in my sewing machine and we cool. can actually have a girdle put together. That'd be great. And this week I'll find where the other half of this went. Right, because I want to glue that. But it has to yeah. dry first. Right. The paint has the to paint. dry. Well, the paint's probably good now. It's just acrylic. It shouldn't take that long. Yeah. So I cut them all down by half an inch, but of course they weren't all the same to begin with, so they've got a little variance. It's okay. And then I will probably the slightly the trim them anyways once they're already in, like once it's all kind of in. Totally so. cool. But looks like you did a good job. Thank it's you. Even. I tried. <laughs> I, I used a straight edge, and, and, and I used a razor knife. A couple of my favorite tools. Podcast interviews love this. What's your favorite tool in the shop? A sharp knife. <laughs> I like tapes and scissors. Yeah, it, it seems basic and silly. Like like I should be saying, oh, I love the plumbus. That's the most useful prop in the shop. I don't actually have a plumbus. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I like the sh a good sharp knife and a straight edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like scissors. Yeah. Rulers. Scissors, rulers. That ruler specifically. Yes, the hip ruler. No. No? Oh, no, the, the clear ruler. The, the center finding clear ruler. This ruler. This that is one. my favorite ruler because it's flexible. It's flexible. It's clear. Right. You can and lay it down and you can actually... Has a grid on it that you can follow. Right. Yes, so this is by far my favorite one, but I've melted so many of these and in the car. <laughs> yep. Easy to do in the Sacramento Sun. Uh, and, and that particular ruler is one where uh, there is a nick on one side. One of the sides is no longer straight, my brain says, because I've shaved it at one point. Because <laughs> I was trying to use it with, you know. Yeah. I, I'm in the habit of cutting it with a, with a metal ruler, so I'm not that careful. I just push up against it. Yeah, no, I totally do that too. <laughs> and usually I use an X-Acto knife. Uh-huh. But you're not so sharper. <laughs> <laughs> I like a sharp knife. If you're cutting foam... Um, foam core, foam, uh, paper too, but especially if you're going to be cutting with EVA foam, a sharp knife is one of the most essential things you can have because a sharp knife is the difference between having a cut piece of foam and a torn piece of foam. And, and if you, and if you scissors play, aren't always as pretty of cutting edges. Right. They're not as always, if your edges are going to be hidden, scissors are fine. And, and for, and for like little trims where you're not cutting, stopping, and then cutting again, um, yeah, scissors, are, I've cut foam with scissors. But uh, the sharp knife gives you a really clean edge, and um, yeah, I think that's that's a lot of control too. A lot of control. So, but I'm always I'm working with foam a lot, so that's why I'm big on knives. I work with fabric a lot, so I have scissors always in my hand. I right. have them in my purse, in my wallet. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've got my all my Ginger scissors, which I need to go get sent off and have sharpened. That I swore by in the '90s because of all the fabric I was working with. Then uh, I started playing with more foam and leather, and then I moved to knives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just buy a whole bunch of the dollar store fabric scissors, or just scissors, right. and I use them. Until they're 
Yeah. Well, I never bring my nice fabric set scissors on set because you can never trust PAs no. to treat them nicely. Or bring them back. Or bring them back. Or, yeah. <laughs> so I just used a bunch of cheap brand new dollar store scissors because if they're brand new, they still cut. Yep. <laughs> After a while, just throw them away. It's a dollar. It's a dollar. Time for new scissors. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. See, someone's trying to address me directly. I see the red. Or you. Oh. It was probably no, me. No, it's Odin. Odin, Odin. Right. Well, so what's, is that canned tuna? Ian Titterman and canned tuna. Oh, and okay. Ian's asking if you could make the Inquisitor's spinning lightsaber, and Cantuna wants okay. to know, is there any way to harden EVA of a thin piece that bends easily and the paint cracks? I wonder if you could just melt some warbler behind it to support it, because that's oh, like yeah. a heavy plastic. Yeah, that'd work. That, that could harden it. Um... I don't, I think, EVA foam is chemical resistant. Which is good, right? Right, yeah. Um, so putting resin on it, like like you would fiberglass, uh, I don't know how well it'll I stick. Know, it I think absorb. it'll peel off. I don't, yeah, I don't think yeah. it'll absorb very well. It was like the um, paint wasn't absorbing. It, it, it kind of sits. It kind of sits on top. Yeah. yeah. It should still grip because it's. No, kinda... it did. It was, okay. but you but, know, like yeah. it. It wasn't like the normal, typical right. where. Plus, it's I was sponges. using Platifex paint, which is specially formulated to stick to EVA foam. Um, yeah. yeah, but. Strengthening uh, it, I would probably add support. Adding support. If you've got the space behind it, which you may not, uh, literally, on, if, if the backside is, is accessible and the backside isn't finished, contact cement another piece of foam to it. I've done this with, uh, with swords. That uh, putting two... So you have, a, you have a piece of foam and another piece of foam, and they're not very sword-like. But when you glue the two of them together, now you've basically made plywood. And it would still flex. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. not going to be. But it is greatly reduced. And when I did the buster sword, I actually put a piece of poster board. So it was contact cement, poster board, contact cement, foam, because it didn't increase the thickness any. And the poster board, being a different material, really stiffened up the buster sword. It was, it's kind of funny how well that worked. Oh, damn. So, I don't know. Interesting. But it all depends on... It sounds like you're trying to, to stiffen up something that already exists, so I, I, I don't yeah. know if those will work for you. That's why I was thinking maybe Warbler, because you turn it into that nice um, fruit roll-up texture. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you squish it. You squish it in there. Totally. And it's great because it doesn't have to be so hot you can't handle it. Yeah. You it's, just yeah. squish it. Heat it so with a hairdryer. But I don't know what your project is or what the situation is. Right. But... And Warble is available at your local Michael's Craft Store. Is it now? Yeah, actually it is. Awesome. Like, when I first wanted to play with it, it wasn't available anywhere but Taps. And it right. Was, remember, you Yeah. You got it for me because yeah. I was searching. Yeah, because I knew where it was and what you're talking about. And my friends in L.A. tell me that Tap Plastics at that time still had the best price, and I thought I was overpriced. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, good times. <laughs> good times. It's still about the same price at Michael's, and but it's available. But it's available, and um, and they have they have the, the natural the rough ride looking one, and they have the black one too. Um, Interesting. I don't know if they fixed the fine print of the coupons yet. You may still be able to use the twenty percent off Michael's coupon on Warbler. Michael's does accept other people's coupons too, so there they is do. also <laughs> there there is that there are ways around it. But yeah, no, yeah. They, they totally do now. Okay, look at we are like fifteen almost. Are we fifteen now? No, we're twelve minutes. But okay, twelve. We're a dozen minutes over. We're a dozen minutes over. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to at least show them kind of where we're at and where we're going? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that really quick instead of just going. Okay, we're done. Bye. No. Yeah. We're, uh, yeah. Where are we at? And what are we doing? Yeah. So. We're... So she's gonna grab the clamshells. So today we worked on uh, the Witcher build, right? We're we're doing the vanilla Witcher armor from the beginning of the game. I'm gonna throw these away. This is all that dust. All that dust because, uh, yeah. It happens when you make things. It happens when you make things. So we have a front and a back. So we have a front and back of, of, of the clamshell. And one of the things I was doing today was putting more of the rivets in here. Because we want to be able to lace this together. But I don't want to... Um, you run thread back and forth or anything back and forth. It's going to chew through the foam. It, it's what happens. You, you can cut wood that way. So we put the, the metal rivets in to... To reinforce make it last longer, reinforce it. And I want to turn better. these ones black because I think it'll just make it look cleaner. Okay. So that's on the... That's on the to-do list. To-do list. If you're going to polish, will do it. Oh, yeah. Um, and then these are the... 
What's the technical term? These are the pauldrons. Pauldrons. So you have your uh, you have your breastplate, and then the, the pauldron was going to fit over it. This one's going to go on the shoulder, and then we got the lower upper arms right here. Right on. That those are going to be riveted together. Riveting. And then. And then what we were working on today, all the red, this is the stuff that we've done over the past couple of months. Yeah, so these are the pieces that are built. they got to get stuck together, and then we'll have... Something is actually going to happen. Right? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe next week something will actually happen. So we have... So this is the girdle. This is all the stuff that happens below the waistline of the breastplate. Yes. And we have the chainmail knitted together for the front, and we lost the one for the back. <laughs> right, it's here, I swear. And then on, we're going to have a side seam. And then, Might be up in my office. Then it's going to be this piece with the little curve in it. Okay. And we're going to make the girdle piece. Right. So the the, the chainmail is the front piece. Yes. And you have a, a straight piece that goes next to it. This. And then you have the curved piece that gives you the, 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 the princess cut or whatever. Yeah, it gives you a tapered waist. Here. Tapered waist. It tapers in at the waist. Okay, good. A little bit of an hourglass figure, just a little. Just a little bit. Because he has one. You, you yeah, tapers. I don't, but he does. Well, I yeah. don't. <laughs> well, you could do it with the right thing. So, And so, then we have, this is going to be the front, the back, and... So it's it's one middle section, and then each front and back has a left and right of the straight and taper. That's why we got four of each. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yes. All so. for it. I've, I've made gussets like this when I was trying to do original series Star Trek uniforms until I stopped making those parts and simplified the pattern. The yeah. first few I did were, oh, they're right to the technical manual because that's a technical manual. <laughs> yeah, well, he has, there's definitely seaming going on in yeah. it. And I like the seaming, so whatever. We'll fit. We're working with what he has. Right. That's where we're at. Sweet. And next week, I want to get those finished in. We have the right. piece to put here. Right, we have the buckles that go across. The do nothing goes nowhere buckles that are on the best breastplate. Yeah, those need to get riveted. And then. Once we have these in, we can actually rivet the shoulders because we can put the Velcro on the shoulders. Right. And then we can rivet the upper arm to it. To the lower arm of the pauldrons. Of the pauldrons. Right. And then... <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So it's the riveting and the Velcro and then the sewing. So there's like some things that still need to happen. Right. It's a chunk of stuff. But it's a chunk of stuff. And then we got straps. Yeah. <laughs> for, for which, whichever. It's all, it's all for the swords. I don't think we're full on making scabbards and stuff for the swords, but there's the straps. Yeah, there's there, he does have you, all the strapping going on. You, you have a few prop swords left over from Smosh that you brought. I don't know if any of those have scabbards. They don't. Do one they? does. One does? One does. Okay, cool. Yeah, one does. All right, so that'll help. Yeah. So we'll have swords. They won't be the right swords, but we'll have swords. They will be the right weight and size. They'll, they'll actually be metal swords. They won't just be foam. Yeah, that's very cool. It is what it is. But that's where we're at, and that's where we're Excellent. going. I like it. Well, I want to say thank you very much to all of you who have hung out this long. That's It's been two hours and 15 minutes of fairly nonstop live stream. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in from New Zealand, tuning in from Malaysia, tuning in from Sacramento. That's amazing from that far away you guys are here. Uh, but... Felicia and I will be back next Monday doing another two hours of live stream, continuing with The Witcher, everything she just said we we're going to do. And and thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next week. And, of course, if you're on my Patreon, remember, you can shoot me a, a question from uh, to the Discord, and I'll pay more attention to it and actually get those questions answered. And, and to answer another Discord question I had, will I ever have a Patreon live stream again? Yeah, I'll, I'll have another one of those before the end of the year. That'll happen. Eventually. Eventually. I wanted to do it last week, but I got, I got caught up trying to get my stuff done. You know, videos for the channel. Anyway, thank you all for, for coming by, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.